Quote Ghost Podcast, episode 10. We back in the motherfucking building, man. Back at it again. The vibes, man. You know, I'm in the building. Vinny in the What's building. Saying? I go by the name Atomic Guns, and I got the big homie on the show today, DJ C. Lo. What's up? What's up? What's up? Glad <laughs> to be here, man. You know, we got the whiskey. So you, you know, you're about I just got a babe. I just got some wine, just a little sip. <laughs> just I sipping. Know, I ain't look. You can see it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But uh, so CeeLo, tell us, tell the people a little bit about yourself. What you've been doing? What you what you got going on right now? Man, I if, man, if 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 I start from the beginning, we'll never finish this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. give us a brief synopsis. All you right, know what so I'm the key points. So, so key point, born and raised in Panama, the country, Panama City. Um, uh, then uh, my mom married a soldier. One, uh, they used to have military bases in Panama back then. Uh, so he was Puerto Rican, and eventually we moved from Panama to the States. And that's when I began my journey learning English and actually, you know, learning about the culture and everything in the States. So we, we got stationed in uh, Augusta, Georgia, um, Okay. Over there by, uh, yeah, I think it was Fort Gordon. Fort Gordon, okay. I yeah. was at Fort Gordon. Yeah, so Fort Gordon was like literally my first military experience. Duty Horrible station. out there, isn't it? Oh, man, I went to Butler High School. <laughs> Ooh, that, I think Fort that, Gordon was ooh. where I went to basic, tr- either basic training. I went to AIT at Fort Gordon. Yeah. So that shit. I had a good time there, though. Yeah, that's I went training out the there. I went training, uh-huh. boy. That shit was horrible. Yeah, Fort Gordon. Is, when I went, it was like nothing but like woods, and all we could do is fish and and just go to school pretty much because there weren't really nothing for me out there. But you know, I was there in AIT, so at a certain point, like you, you know, you go to AIT, you fresh out of basic and shit. Yeah, of course. I went to like a mixed basic, like with dudes and chicks and shit, and you know, the whole time you couldn't touch them, you yeah, know. And then you get the yeah. basic, and then I was at a mixed. Uh, a, I mean, you could get you get the AIT, and I was at a mixed AIT. And, like, the first few weeks, you still can't touch them. You can't go out, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But then you get that fucking privilege to go out again. Yeah. And shit, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> but everybody fucking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, shit is going yeah, yeah, wild. You feel like you just got, you was locked up. You man. was locked up, nigga, about the bus. Yeah. You was really, like. Especially for me, cause you know I, was, you know I don't know I don't know if y'all was, you know I'm infantry. Here, I'm you know infantry what I'm too. All right, yeah, you, <laughs> you feel me? Uh, I know. So, so you know, <laughs> you know that shit like jail time for real. Cause nowadays, nowadays like I think they give the soldiers a phone and shit like that when you in basic yeah, now. Cause it's it kind of softer now. It's a little softer. But when I was going in, I was I was in like transitioning from like the old army to the new army. You know what I'm saying? So it was still the old timers and shit. Uh, like, yeah, I, I came in with the greens. I had the, uh, yeah. the, the camouflage green uniform. They was beating, beating y'all up and shit. <laughs> I didn't get beat up, but I, <laughs> yeah. I, I smoked I, the fuck I, out I, of you. I, I did see my drill sergeant bring the hell out of somebody yeah. and he got relieved. That's crazy. <laughs> he he did relieved. what to him? He brimmed them like, so the drill sergeant had it. He literally just started beating them with his brim. What? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Because he couldn't put his hands on him, so he thought. Basic training is wild as fuck, man. You <laughs> signing up to go to this place for to let these people like belittle you and yell at you all in your face and shit. Yeah. And it's like I remember when I went, nigga. It was like no experience ever, and it was life changing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like same for me. I was like, I was this shocked. shit, this kind of shit exists. You yeah, know, yeah. you leave your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You leave your whole life behind. To get on these buses and go to this place and fucking they treat you like absolute shit the whole motherfucking time. Yeah, shit. And for make me, you do exercises the whole motherfucking time. For me, it was kind of <clears throat> a, a breeze. You know why it was a breeze? Because my my step that was military. Okay. So I felt like I was in basic training every day. Oh, uh, it was one of them situations. Yeah, okay. so every day it felt like I was in basic training. So when I went to basic Damn. training, it felt easy. It felt oh, like okay. I was just there. You know, doing my time. And Yo, he prepared I, you I'm for gonna, it. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I was in basic training. I was treating that shit like jail, boy. <laughs> look, niggas, look. How so? How so? Bro, bro, look. So they had the MRE joints. We would, me and my, like, you know, you get a little click in there. Me and my yeah, little click. Yeah. There's some cats from Philly and shit yeah. like that up north. 
We was like, yo, let's get the MREs, man. We got the MREs, got inside of them, took the M&Ms out. Motherfuckers late at night. It'd be like 2 o'clock at night. And they'd just be like, yo, you got some M&Ms? Because you know you can't take no snacks and <laughs> we, shit. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, couldn't yeah. have, no, we we have to, no snacks. We used to hide them. We used to hide it up in the ceiling and shit. Yeah. Niggas used to do that in my and basement, I, I, too. I remember, like, you know, the phases. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, yes. so after we had got out of, uh, you know, going into gold phase. Yes. Fuck around. They gave us our phones back. Because you get that pass, that one day pass. That you one day mm-hmm. pass. Then we you, went to the mall. In basic? <laughs> yeah, in basic. Yeah. You get a day pass. Because ours is OSET. I got that. We get OSET, though. Because it's a one unit. What, yeah. What's it called? How do you... I, I forgot the Army abbreviation shit. It's mm-hmm. like... So we went We went from, from actual basic training, and then we switched over to... To AIT, so AIT. That was, that was no, like, we don't leave. We don't leave the base. We literally oh, stay. Oh, that's how you do it in the infantry. Yeah, you just because yeah. okay. you basically all the stuff that you guys train for to be a soldier. That's what we do. That's our actual okay. job. Okay. So yeah. like, when we was going out of gold phase, they gave us a pass. So like, I bought you know you know you get out of basic. You think you balling and shit. I'm yeah. over here buying. It. I bought another phone and shit. <laughs> then I didn't give back my phone. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I was in, I was in that shit like charge motherfuckers to call their moms and shit. Oh uh, yeah, you know because they don't, they don't take the phone, they don't, they don't, they take your phone. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't, you don't see your phone throughout the whole base. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they yeah. took my phone and shit. You only had the pay phones and shit. You know, no, I think we, could, they, we couldn't yeah, use we those either. There. We, we had like there. one day, like before graduation or something, where we could use a pay phone and shit. But the the majority of the time I was there, it was no communication with the outside world and shit. Like that totally was. cut off. Yeah, that's od. Yeah, so like I had my phone and I'm I'm in there like people late at night. Crying like, you know, you walk up, you're like, yo, man, you wanna call, you wanna call your moms, praying, the praying on yeah, that yeah, like, well, Call your that mom. Need. I got it, I got the phone. <laughs> you feel me? They like where? Yeah, but you know, everybody getting money. You know, you can't spend your money. You know what I mean? So I was, I was making. You know, but how did you side. get paid? Like, did people have like? I would money tell them to it? run to the ATM because you know when you yeah. go to the DFAC, yeah. where before you eat and shit. Okay. Like after that, that red phase, you allowed to use your car because you can run to the PX or something like that. Get a oh, Oreo you shake. Basically in AIT. Yeah, at, that point. at yeah. that point. And I used to be like, "Yo, in the morning, run to the bank, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, give yeah. me that. Give me that. Give me that ten dollars. I used to charge people like ten dollars to talk on the phone. Hustling. And I was getting BH That's and everything. Crazy, bro. In AIT. Yeah, oh, because you I was, you was yeah, married yeah, and yeah. shit. I wasn't married. I was in there single and shit. Yeah, I was single. Yeah, so I was. I probably came back. Yo, Dante, I came back. Niggas came back to the hood buying bottles. (laughs) 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 We was splurging. (laughs) Uh, But I think my basic training was pretty hard just for the simple fact that that was my first experience with actually dealing with black drill sergeants. And I feel like black drill sergeants, when when you're black or Latino and you have like a leader that is black, it's like he makes it. Ten times harder than it needs to be. Yeah, make an example out of you. you yeah, know. so he's he wants to put you. He, he's trying to push you over and make you the best leader yeah, you can yeah. be. But it's it's overwhelming to the yeah. point that you know that motherfucker put me in the damn gas chamber three times because yeah, I was black right. because I was freaking. My buddies were from New York. Mm. Another one for Georgia. So it was like all the black motherfuckers were going back in there. It's Three kinda, times, it's kind of <laughs> fucked up right there. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yo, y'all, like your, your gas chamber experience probably wasn't like our no, gas chamber. No, definitely experience. not, bro. Definitely not. I tell how you, you I, see, I seen how y'all do y'all's gas chambers thing. I actually watched. Like I had to go to a range and do it. Like you mean because, like infantry people versus it's way other it's, MOS's We do it way. It's way it's worse. Way intense. I mean, the shit was pretty bad though. <laughs> like, I mean, that bitch like. <laughs> Yeah. Me too, nigga. Like, but, but y'all might have had to be in there longer. But, or some shit. Yes. but look, bro, we we had to like the thing is, you how many times you did the gas chamber just in basic, right? We yeah, had to, we, we had to certify know. in the infantry. You got to certify every what is it every? It, it's supposed to be every year. Every bro. year. But see, fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why I didn't want to go into motherfucking <laughs> infantry, nigga. Like, we got shipped to Iraq, and I was like, thank God, I am not an infantry nigga. And then I heard. That my MOS used like one of one person from our um t- from our shop usually have to go out with fucking on uh, missions yeah, and yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is not finna be me, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> I am not going out the wire. It's not what I'm in the <laughs> army for. None of that shit. So I always made sure like I was floating in the middle. Yeah. Like in the as far as who was like more proficient in their job and shit. Like I wanted to be under the radar, but not the worst. <laughs> Not the not the, the best, ghost. you know. I want to be like who 
Griffin yeah. who? Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you see, in, in, like, it's a little different in infantry, like, because they, I guess the best are the only ones that can go to, like, you know, you can just do walk-ons for school and shit like that. So mm. in the beginning, like, I never, like, that's one thing about the Army, right? I never changed, like, who I was. Like, I was still in there wilding. I never really let people, like, I, like, I definitely learned, like, yeah. you know? But I never let people, like, like, disrespect me because some some ncos be they be trying to like push yeah, limit they be trying to push yeah and limit. i would tell them like look i respect you but this this is this is just a job you know what yeah. i'm saying you're not my parent bro like you ain't gonna talk to me like that like and i would pull them to the side i wouldn't do it in front of a bunch of people and shit like that i just tell them like yo bro i'm a man at the end of the day yeah and, I, and it's like the old sergeants they used to be like you know like especially when i was at e4 they were like yo we can go back in the wood line i used to be like yo let's go yeah. i won't tell nobody Cause that was used to be everybody's favorite line. Like we go back in the wood line. Yeah, fuck no, you up. like all right, shit, let's man. get it. I won't even tell. They could like, but they would like, nah, nah, nah. But like, other than that, I had a good, I had a good ride throughout my military career. Fort I Benning, I, I like, I missed Fort Benning once I left. I hated oh, yeah? Georgia, but I missed my first unit. Cause I used to bitch about my first unit. I used to be like, man, fuck, I don't, I, I don't like this. I can't wait to get the. I'm getting out the fucking army. Fuck yeah. this. <laughs> but then I came to, I came to Germany, and I was like, damn, like. Shit is really different out it's here, different. like, yeah. bro. Like some of these soldiers can't, couldn't do. You can do this. Like I remember when I first got there, there was like parade rest. You had to stand parade rest at E four with an E four and mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, like here, motherfuckers was like, "What's up, Vince?" Like my last, <laughs> my Vince wasn't even on my shit. Like, what up, Vince? You know, you know. I was just yeah, like, it's, it's it's more relaxed compared to conventional army when you're out there, like yeah. Fort Campbell. You know, the eighty second Fort Drum. It's like you're literally like. By the book, you know, you, yeah. you, you got to stand parade rest, all that stuff. Facts. But when I came to Germany, it was like, yo, we're going to go party. We're going to do this. But we, we we worked our ass off. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We worked our ass off. But whenever, you know, we got off from work, it was like, all right, let's go party. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. When I came to Germany, I was wilding. Like, I, I came, I was E5, and I was bugging, bro. I just, because my unit was on like rear D. I was out here wilding. I ain't gonna even lie to you, bro. <laughs> I like, was wilding the whole time. I, I, I was ruined, in the army. I, I definitely like. I still got what an honorable all that on my benefits, but I definitely like ruined my army career. When I came to <laughs> like, I can't, I can't even a lot lie. of people, a lot of people either do it in Germany or they do it in Korea. Yeah, because in places like that, I fuck around met you know okay. I fuck around met my wife and shit, too. and then um, oh, okay. I'm fuck around met my wife and shit and like. You know, I was like, hell no, nah, I ain't about to let the army fuck this shit up. You yeah. know? I'm getting the fuck out. And I just, I got out. Nigga. You know, but Germany, Germany yeah, was definitely a turn up for me. Like, I did. Was you ever stand? You were stationed in yeah, Germany? Yeah, I was stationed at Homefields. Okay. I was okay. stationed at Homefields for 10 years. 10 years. And then yeah. you went back to America. Yeah, that's when I went back to Fort Benning. Okay. And then did my LC instructor time. And then from there, I. I already knew that I was going to just do 20. I wasn't doing no more than 20. 20? Yeah. Damn, he did 20 years. That's a long... Yeah, you, so you retired. Retired. Retired, retired. That's what's up, though. You got that pension. Yeah. You got that check. You yeah. over here doing your I'm thing. Big chilling. Man, man, yeah. respect, because I, I could never... <laughs> hope you I got could 100%. never, nigga. Got 100%? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, you know the vibes. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, you good. Nigga, you nigga good. sick for life over here. You set. set got that pension. But I could yeah. never... Fathom staying in the military for could, twenty years. Yeah, it was rough, man. There were some points, but you know, to be honest, like what kind of drove me because as a kid, like I, I was already like disciplined yeah. and then I already had goals in life. Yeah. So it was like I already knew that the minute I joined the military and I signed that paper, I knew that I was gonna do try to do twenty. No, that's because what's I, I really I, from the start. From the start, because I already knew my stepdad was already getting ready to retire uh, okay. and I already knew what the benefits were at the end of the tunnel. Okay. So my mind was already getting geared up to do the whole 20. That's what's up. That's a good and, way to look and, at it. And, and I was like, I'm nothing's going to stop it unless I, I stop it. Mm. Yeah, that's, you see that's what I'm a good saying? mindset that's to have. Mindset, if, you gonna, yeah. if you gonna do it, you gotta goddamn commit yeah, to yeah, some shit like that. Because when I was in Maps, <laughs> it's a doozy. You know what I'm saying? When, <laughs> when I was in Maps, he said he already knew. When I was in that Maps, the nigga said, "Yeah, you gotta do three years." I was like, "Wait, is it three? <laughs> <laughs> that bitch like what? Oh, you signed up for three initially? No, I did four, but I was like, you know, that last that last year, you, you can't really count that shit because you 
getting out. Yeah, yeah you getting out. Like, it was like that for yeah, me I when, that I was, whole part, when I hit nineteen. <laughs> when I hit nineteen, it was like like all right, I'm already just like I was I was cruising, but at the same time, I you know it was like I know you're about to retire, but you're going to Fort Polk with us and do. Nah, they made you go to Fort Polk. Yeah, I went to nah, Fort Polk. I, I was like I went after to, your twentieth year. No, I went to Fort Polk like like seven, eight months out of my retirement. Nah, that's crazy. You, you have, have you been to Fort Polk? No. Oh my god, yeah. I, th- I think that's the worst. I'm gonna be real. With you. I think that's the worst. <laughs> Not for real. Like without laughing. Where is so it? So you know, I'm serious. I think that's yes. the worst base. In yes. every in every army, like any installation, where is for for a Louisiana, Louisiana? That's one to Swamp. me, to like in the boonies, in the boonies, bro. Boonies. Like to me, mm-hmm. that's probably one of the worst supposed to be stationed at. To be honest, that I thought Fort Drum was gonna be the worst post. Mm-hmm. It actually turned out to be the best post, mm. which is weird because you out there negative forty five degree temperature. Yeah, for training. Mm. 30, 20, 35, 40. Doing PT in your just shorts. Just out there, just frozen. Like, you you're, you come back from PT and everything is frozen. You're wearing, Fuck you know, vodka shit, lava and all this stuff, and your, your shit's frozen, bro. Like, that, legit frozen. Yeah. That shit, um, what I was about to say, like, fucking, I, I was going to get stationed. I had an option to go to uh, Fort Drum, but I was just like, I'm from New York. I ain't. Ch- I know if I'm in New yeah, York, you're gonna be I'm going to get sucked home. back home. And yeah, you was trying to like, get out. That. I was like, I'm not going back there. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. So, so for me, it was like, it, it, it was the best time in the military because we ended up being stationed there. And then my son had the best time. If your family is having a good time, yeah. for me, it's just like, you're in okay, the right place. I'm in the right place because... He was able to wake up, you know, play his video games in the morning, and then he spent literally 10 hours of the day outside playing. Okay. The stuff that we used to do as kids. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't see it no more. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But in the military community, when you're stationed inside the base, and you have that community where it's, it's friendly and, you know, the kids are running around. Yeah. Yeah. Is is very good for the kids, you know, and, and that for me was. That's what it's all about right there. Was, was the best time <laughs> for me, and I was like. You know, of course, I don't look like I'm in top shape, but then I was in top shape because I was running every day. I, I ran to work. I worked out, did the CrossFit, came, ran back home. And at nighttime, I walked the neighborhood with my wife. You know what I mean? Things like that just kept the morale up. And then the summer in Fort Drum was just Especially when you have a gorgeous. good support system. Yes, so. and then. Yeah. That's important in the Army. When I got there, my first sergeant at the time was my squad leader here in Germany. Ah. So now I'm a platoon sergeant. And in a and heavy weapon squad platoon, and he's my first sergeant. And like the relationship was just great. The company commander was great. So it's just like the whole environment was like outstanding. So you like, got really lucky with your whole setup. And yeah, for sure. Like I couldn't good, ask man. nothing better. I was disappointed that the army was sending me the two years before my retirement mm-hmm. because I was planning to retire in Georgia, but they're like, no, nah, you got to go. And then just I the went army. and. And then I was like, all right, I go, but I'm out in two years, no matter what. Yeah. And then I did my two years and I was out and I was disappointed I was leaving, but I was coming back to Germany. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people, you know, the, the the conversation was, you know, tell a little bit about yourself. So I was like, okay, that's that's part of it. The military for twenty years. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, while I was in the military, I was DJing. Yeah, that's what I wanted so, to get to right there. Yeah, so <laughs> I Used a DJ and that's a, so when I, when I got stationed at Fort Campbell was my first duty station. I met a, a guy named Francisco Budak, which was DJ Kilowatt at the time. And I, we used to hang out at his house and we used to just, you know, um, just hang out every Friday, <laughs> Saturday and just like, like how we doing now and yeah. just pop a beer and just hang out and just listen to music and stuff. But he was a DJ and I didn't know Nothing about DJ. I just love music because I have my all my my albums and stuff. And then he started like scratching and doing all this stuff in the turntable, and they caught my attention to the point that now I'm coming to your house every Friday and Saturday, but now I'm also on your turntable trying to learn how to DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, "Yo, we I thought you came to hang out." I was like, "Yeah, we did, but I also want to learn how to." I want to fuck with this DJ fire, shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Fire so, to you. So and then I eventually started buying my equipment, and then you was in the military during all this. Yeah, or? I was okay. in the military, so I started buying my equipment. I started putting it in the barracks, 
And um, one club got interested in me. I was like, yo, you you come DJ at my club. We looking for a DJ. And I was like, brand new. I was still messing up how to scratch and yeah. how to blend and all this stuff. I was like, man, I'm not that good. He's like, nah, don't worry. You'll learn. And then I I, I, started, right I, I started DJing in the club. And, and it was like four days a week. So I was... Leaving the club at three o'clock in the morning, having PT at at six thirty. So I, I was, it was, and it was paying you too. Yeah, they were paying yeah, me. Right. Yeah, yeah but I didn't have no DJ name, and you know my my first name is Carlos. So, I uh, and they were like, "What's your DJ name?" I was like, "I don't have a DJ name." And then I came back the following week, and they'll say, "DJ CeeLo. and I'm like, "Why y'all pick DJ CeeLo? Because your name is Carlos." Oh, so they picked your DJ they, name. They picked my DJ name. <laughs> That's what's up. That's it. And then from there, I was like, okay, DJ CeeLo it is. And then I just like, all right. It sounds good, too. Yeah. yeah DJ CeeLo. Like, that shit was like, sounds fire. Like. It was like just flow in. And it, it, I just used it. And I thought about rebranding and everything. And then I was like, too many people already know who I am. Like, why am mm-hmm. I rebranding myself? And on top of it now, even with you telling me this story, you know, it's kind of like. That yeah. it kind of explains the backstory. Too. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. Just gave it to you, and it's like, okay, fuck it. Like, yeah, you know? I didn't want to change it. It was just like, okay, here, here you are, brand new to the scene, brand new DJ. Here's your name too with it. So I, I didn't want to change it. Yeah, it fell in your lap. Why not? You know, yeah. I, I started. Well, I I started rapping before I got in the military and doing music and writing and all that. But like, uh, I got back into it. When I got stationed at my duty station, because I met some dudes that was doing doing music out there already, but hadn't really popped yet, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> before that, I was just recording shit at my house. Like, I ain't really put out nothing serious, nothing like that. And then, you know, after a while, we formed like a group. <laughs> you know, and the whole time, I'm in the, I'm in the Army, you know what I'm saying? And uh, But I ain't wanted, I hated the military, you know? So that was like my, like, escape to, like, be make music <laughs> yeah be normal go to the club make music at my house and shit and then i linked up with these dudes and like i didn't think the songs was even that good you know but i I showed one of the dudes that was an engineer like all the little shit i had recorded on my little i had like a mac mini at the crib you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> and was just recording shit and um we ended up making a whole album out of, out of them songs and shit you know what i'm saying and Getting some notoriety in the city. We was in Killeen at Fort Hood and shit. Oh man, yeah, you know yeah. it's it's a huge nightlife. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, lifestyle out there and shit. So we started doing clubs and fucking. Uh, we had this one. It was this one nigga in the group that was. Uh, he was kind of like famous on Facebook and like MySpace back then and shit. Yeah. And I linked up with him and. His Twitter name was like Lick My Tats or some shit. And like bitches was really fucking with this nigga. Like mm-hmm. I could see it. And I could see that he lived in the same like little area that I did and shit. So I hit that nigga up and I was like, you need to make a song about that Lick My Tat shit. Cause I see like you going viral for that shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, it's a good idea. And he was a rapper too, but he ain't really had no song that like popped like that yet. And uh, he was like, yeah, I should. And I was like, I already wrote that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I sent him like a demo of that shit. He was like, this shit, this shit dope. And then we did that shit and put it out. And we did, like, we got booked for a show not too long after that, after the song came out. Shit was like packed brim to brim. Everybody singing every word of that track. So it you know was buzzing. Like it, was buzzing really it was buzzing like a motherfucker in Killeen. And, um... You know, we was opening up for fucking Outkast and Jeremiah, just like doing shit. What whole time I'm in, I'm in the military and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then like, we had another track, and you know, Slip and Slide wanted to sign yeah. us and shit. And um, but the like these was old songs that I recorded on my Mac. Mm-hmm. Like I ain't even had a like I ain't even know who produced the beats or nothing. I would get the beat, mm-hmm. rename it to the name of the song, and just yeah. not know who the fuck made the shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So they the record label like, do y'all own the beat? You know, and we like we don't even know who who made the shit because <laughs> I renamed <laughs> the shit. Yeah, and they like oh we want to sign y'all for this one particular song, but if y'all can't get the beat, then it ain't nothing we can do. And that's what that whole shit happened, like when I went AWOL and all that shit, because I thought we were finna get signed and shit. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a long ass, crazy ass story. But yeah, I was my point is I was doing music and shit in the in the military too, and the shit almost popped. Like even when I went to Iraq, right? We got we got shipped, and then we're gonna talk. Um, we're gonna get off the army shit. But when I went to Iraq, you know how 
like I went there kind of in the beginning or like kind of the middle and we got shipped to like a place where it was nothing you know flew in in helicopters and shit mm -hmm. fucking wasn't nothing there but like big ass um like aircraft hangars and shit and like few barriers and um you know, we had to sleep in trucks for like two weeks, and so they like flew in all kind of like building materials and, and shit. Had and to build them and shit. Yeah, we had to build a whole fucking fob over there. You know what I'm saying? Down to the fucking sleeping quarters, the the fucking um, the shitters, the fucking yeah. those we call porta potties and yeah, yeah, all right. You know, and all the offices and and, and everything. You know, <clears throat> showers, everything, burn everything. You know what I'm saying? They taught us how to do that shit, and we building shit in the fucking desert. I'll never forget. <laughs> Iraq man But After we got done Building that shit We had a whole Bunch of shit Like building materials Left over And they done taught niggas How to How to build So After I would get off work I would sneak To the yard Where they had all the shit And I would fucking Steal shit Steal wood Steal screws Hammers Whatever And I built like a studio Behind The shop that we had built For our combo shop And shit mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying I put a booth in that bitch What's up though Put a table. I bought, I bought fucking the whole studio set up online. Cause you know you just got money piling yeah, up yeah. when you went when you went overseas and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was buying all that shit, researching shit on YouTube. Couldn't really use none of the recordings because you you know in Iraq they got these big ass generators running everywhere and yeah. bombs dropping and shit, <laughs> and you're recording and shit. Yeah. But I, I wanted to keep up on my on my <laughs> shit when they shipped me to fucking Iraq, and it was something for me to escape from being. On Mars, pretty much, right yeah. at that moment, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it definitely looked like Mars because Afghanistan was another version of Mars, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, shit, crazy. Anywhere you at, with it's nothing but sand and sandstorms, and you can see. You know how you getting some shit out of an oven and the oven real hot, and you can yeah, like you see can the see heat waves. Like the mirage, yeah. 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 If you just walking normally in fucking Iraq, you can see the heat waves like yes. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's OD. <laughs> Niggas will be outside all day, be sweating all day. You take your uniform off, shit stiff. You know what I'm saying? Like from a, uh, like, from all the salt like collecting in the mud. Like you put starch on that uniform for hours. <laughs> uh, that's hell, boy. This shit is inhumane, man. This shit, you should, nobody should have to, I don't see how people live over Did there, man. Did you burn shit? Because I had to burn shit. Nigga, we would have eight hour shifts burning shit. <laughs> Yeah, pulling the, it's pulling the motherfucking drum out. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking clumps of shit in that bitch. <laughs> Pouring diesel on that it. Swimming in, swimming in piss. That should be stinking. Pads, tampons. Everything. Do it stink? <laughs> Nigga, what, what are you asking? <laughs> and you know, like, oh, shit don't man. burn, you know? It, take, it takes a long time to burn, like, five, It don't burn, so hours. you have to pour gas... You, you, it, Diesel. You have to pour fucking diesel in that bitch and then you gotta over and over again. And you got this big ass wooden <laughs> stick, and you gotta sit there and stir that shit the whole time to keep the flame burning and shit. You until just be, you be by yourself, or you get to talk. No, it's all it's a two man buddy. detail and shit. Y'all niggas be chilling, like chilling as much as you can while you breathing in shit fumes and shit. <clears throat> At the end of the shift, your face will be my fucking man's in twenty, my boy. Twenty Fuck after God. that, yeah. nigga, I was yeah. like, I was already out, but. <clears throat> well, man, did After so doing that's that, why, that's why I got allergies now that I never had before. I would have called. I would have claimed disability. <laughs> you know, Congress, Joe Biden just said some shit that they they, they gonna compensate people that had to do that shit. Yeah. Like it's passing a new bill about that shit. Like, with, with the shit, people who had to burn shit in <laughs> in Iraq. Yo. It's like a new disability. I'm gonna get that shit. You gotta grab that. <laughs> shit. They gotta give me me on that one, nigga. Cause Bro, they had a nigga burning you, man. shit, we, man. We, Can we you imagine? That shit sounds horrible, Bro, because I never. Horrible. Look, I never had asthma. I never had allergies, and I developed all this condition after it. breathing in that shit. Boy. Breathing yeah. in shit, man. It, it was either between that or or freaking. I had a crazy ass platoon sergeant that set up like four smoke pots in, in an area in a real close area, and I don't know if you ever seen what a smoke pot. Yeah, of course, bro. That. Bro, when I'm telling you I went on vacation, I was still coughing, like, the smoke of the smoke. But now the, now the base is out there and shit, like, in, in Iraq, that shit is, like, built up now. Like, that shit is, yeah. like, yeah. I seen somewhere. But I was with the niggas that started building that shit <laughs> from the ground up, you know what I'm saying? So we were still out there burning shit, not... Not taking showers for fucking yeah. two months and shit. Yeah, yeah. We didn't camping. have no water to take showers. I saw it was in Afghanistan. Like, we literally was in a remote area in the mountains where... 
I don't know if you've seen that 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 documentary Triple. Oh, it was Triple. It, it, it was literally like that, but we was in, yeah, in the Zabu province oh, okay. of it, and and I'm telling you, bro, it was it was. Rough. I have, actually have a friend that um a friend that was in that um in what was it chosen company? Yeah, mm-hmm. I have a friend that was actually in in the in the uh in the, in the unit. Nah, oh, okay. not in the documentary, but in the, in unit. the unit. He just didn't go. He was in a different um thing. He wasn't in chosen. He was in a different um yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely yeah those 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 times. i would be shook if i was building from the ground up in afghanistan i ain't yeah, gonna lie to you it's, it's iraq i know iraq was bad too it was bad uh, what, what year did you did you go in the beginning the very beginning or i ain't go in the very beginning when i joined it had just popped off and that's how i got that like uh rapid yeah. entry shit mm-hmm. and but, but shit as soon as i got the fucking fort hood two weeks oh yeah yeah for kuwait uh, iraq Four yeah. Hood is one of those units that they, bro, they 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 rotate like literally. I have rotate friends you that Fort Benning was like that too in Iraq. Yeah, uh, when, before when Fort Hood is Kelly infamous Hill, yeah. for fucking deploying motherfuckers. Because Kelly yeah. Hill got all them ribbons. You see, <coughs> Hard Rock Company, yeah. them niggas yeah. got all them ribbons. Yeah. Yeah. I was in a cavalry that. unit. I was in One Ninth uh, Cav and oh, shit. Oh yeah, yeah. So them yeah. niggas was gun hole about <laughs> going over there. I mean, they kind of like they kind of infantry too. You know, like yeah, it's infantry unit. You come over here, you're in a cav unit. Feels like it's a cav unit. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy though, bro. Yeah, that like I would be, I don't know, building from the ground. I would have been okay going out there when they had the PX, the Popeyes, all that yeah, shit out nah. there. I'd be like, make know. it so bad. I we would go to places that already had that shit. Like it, it was a few places that had like McDonald's and like what? Subway what? and shit. What? Yeah, that was that was already built up. The shit tasted like trash, or well, even more trash than McDonald's normally tastes, but. Some places like we, we would like travel to, like some files would be more built up than us, you know. What I'm saying, was hitting IDs, all that too, right? During yeah, niggas was hitting IDs. We got bombed every day. Like, I ain't really experienced much over there, thankfully. I ain't had to see nobody get killed, or yeah, yeah. I ain't even had to bust my gun over there other than ranges and shit, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Because I was a, I was a fobbit, you know, because of my job and shit. Yeah. And proud of it. Like, I ain't want to go. Yeah, that nah, ain't what I signed up for, you know what I'm saying? I was with the shit. Respect, I, I the respect shit. for niggas that was with the shit. shits. <laughs> but I got Maybe. in that bitch to fucking. I ain't go lie. I was hoping. As a stepping stone for my life. In you the know beginning, what I'm in not to give it up. In the beginning, I was definitely like, I was with the shits. But then when I was like, he's with them white boys. Yeah. Like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go kill these motherfuckers, man. The I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, though. I don't remember like when we, was, when we when we was doing training and shit. I remember I had this one sergeant, like he was my squad. I ain't gonna say his name and shit, but he know if you watching this. He was like, he yelled at me. He was like, you you go out there first and you you hop on that. I was like, nigga, I'm going to keep it a rag with you, boy. <laughs> you just throw that bomb. I'm not hopping on it. Oh, he wanted you to jump on the grenade. Yeah, yeah. We was really we was really like, you know when you go this to nigga- the houses up in, in, in uh, not Kelly, not on, by like Red Diamond. They got the, the fake houses. Yeah, where- you're talking about the, the shooting. The, it's the, like a drill. The, it's yeah. like uh, CQB. Yeah, yeah, this. I just yeah. be forgetting the yeah, name. CQB. Yeah, they, they did some, <laughs> I don't know. They did some Lone Survivor shit where they, you know, playing around. They got the suits on through the thing. Yeah. My I sergeant, remember that shit. My yeah. sergeant legitly like was yelling at me, telling me like, because I was a team leader. He was like, you're a fucking team leader. You're supposed to be take charge, da, da, da. What if this was really a bomb? And I was like, I'm keeping a rass on. I ain't jumping on no bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't jumping on no bomb. Okay, nigga. but it was it was because you was team leader and not like, just because you was like the black dude you know, on the squad. They, they t- always tell the privates, like, if you see a grenade, you jump on it. Like yeah. they, they, they that's trade. a wild thing to tell somebody. Like, what yeah. the fuck I look like? I mean, nah, I respect that. Don't get me wrong. I don't know. You know I respect some people who do it. Sisters that did it. That's who the did it. But I'm saying, like, you can't like. That's not something to expect from a person. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? But it, I guess it is in the military, though. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. F- but but I, it's just like when you clear a minefield. Who you think is gonna go? It's not gonna go. To, it's not gonna be the sergeant. It's yeah. gonna be the lowest person. Yeah, out I know. There, out there, and that's what you signing up for when you, you join. And, and, I would, and me personally, me personally, like call me whatever. Everybody that's in the army that know me, like I get, I take that 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 jail time, nigga. Before I clear up, because you know they, exactly, you know they put you in jail for shit like that. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I take the jail time, nigga. 
Mm-hmm. Like, how much time I'm you give some shit like that? I don't know. I, I think you got to wait till you do the court martial. Y'all yeah, be just like Muhammad Ali. <laughs> like he ain't want to go to the to the military. Yeah, you nigga, know? I was trying to get out on some shit like that at one point, <laughs> nigga. I was I was th- I was thinking about becoming a chaplain and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Being a what they call it a uh, chaplain assistant. Chaplain assistant. Chaplain assistant. Cause they you know they can't get sent to war and shit. <laughs> they gotta. It's like a term. Uh, <laughs> like the oh movie no! Where, I was looking into that you know, shit. Like the one movie you can't he didn't want to hold a gun. <laughs> yeah, you, they couldn't hold a gun and shit because yeah. they did, it didn't agree with some shit. And I was yeah. like, hmm, that's not with pretty. the Geneva Convention and stuff like that. Yeah, because when I was in Iraq and they let a nigga, what really fucked me up about Iraq is when you get to go home on R and R. You know what I'm saying? Because I right. went home for them two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I would have came back, nigga. Nah. And I had been out there for like I had been out there for like six, seven months already, and I had kind of got used to like. <laughs> As yeah. brutal as that shit was, you get you can adapt you to anything. Adapt. Yeah, you get adapt. used to anything, the routine of anything. So it was just like I was just living life out. I got used to the bombs whistling in the air and shit. <laughs> like, you know, I wasn't ducking no more and shit, you know. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's another bomb. When I forgot that I was tripping. Yeah, we were running for cover. Yeah, I was running for cover while other niggas was just looking at me like, ha ha. Like, I was like, ha ha, nigga. A bomb That's just flew over life. our head, you know? <laughs> But after a while, I was yeah, like that like, too. You know, man, all the ugly bitches one? started right. looking good and shit. You know, <laughs> and um, bro, we didn't see FEMA for like seven. But months, But it was a bro. few, and when you first got that, it was nasty. But after a while, nigga, after like seven months seeing the bro. same chick, you ain't got none, and it's illegal to get some. <laughs> yeah, it's illegal. <sighs> they start looking like Beyonce out there, bitch. <laughs> Straight up, bro. I'm telling you, we didn't have no feet. We were so remote. Like we had no female at one time. The chaplain came with his assistant. It was a female. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the 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 headquarter was like literally like 600 meters away from our sleeping quarter. And when the helicopter landed and they took the VIPs to the to the headquarter and yada yada, bro, we could smell her 600 meters away. Oh, y'all, shit, them pheromones was bro. in the air. <laughs> Niggas was like, I was like, bro, it's a bitch. Like, 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 it's, it's a female? <laughs> like, you can smell that. You're like, what? Like, yeah, seven man, months? it's not natural to be isolated nah, away bro, from women that long, nah, man. You gotta think about it. Niggas locked up. You know, free to I guys, know, man. like, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. Like, I ain't experienced it like y'all did, but yeah, man. I'm just saying. And then, like, like what, what I was saying when I. After getting used to that, you can say he stopped ducking. Yeah, yeah after getting yeah. used to that, then they let you go home for two weeks and be a hero. You know, as soon yeah. as you as soon as you land in your uniform in the airport, you know, motherfuckers like buying clapping. you drinks and shit. You know, you get yeah. you. I got pulled over, told the cop. You know, he asked me what I was doing. I was like, I'm home from Iraq. He he was like, Oh, he just let me go. I got to feel white privilege and yeah. shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my bro, whole family it, treat me good. You know, it's just, I'm back. I got money because I've been saving up and shit. Yeah, yeah. You bossed up, save up, bossed a up. Lot. and All then right. you got to go right back to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shitting in fucking metal tins and burning that shit. Nah, bro. You know, what I'm saying? like what? And that I got to do how many more months it's of this crazy, shit? It's crazy that you're talking about that because, like, <clears throat> like I ain't never been deployed, but like. It was kind of like I was ducking deployments. I don't know how I did it. I did it. I right? don't ask how. I just did it. But fuck around and uh, man, I don't know. I felt like that when I was in the field. <laughs> so no, I, I feel you. It would. It would. I feel imagine, like that. I'm bro. You, but imagine 15 months. Nah, and because remember we used to do 30 30 day field problems. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But this is like when this, I'm yeah, of course, you, way worse. It, it's, it's it's bad, man. It's I like used, it's like you go to work one day. You don't get off until the next fucking year. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty okay. much, pretty much. Nah, that is true. Yeah, you, you don't. Yeah, bro. I, I used to be. Look, that shit man, is not. That shit is wild, look, man. man. They fuck around. Take us. They take us up to Red Diamond. We doing land land nav for a whole oh, thirty. Getting ready man. for EIB and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like. I'm over here like, you know, and you just you just band together just talking with you know how it used to I don't know, I don't know, you did your twenty, but you know. Yeah. When it comes down to the friends and shit, I be talking to friends and all we complaining about is what we gonna do when we get out the army yeah, and shit. Man. Like fuck this shit. They got us out here. Niggas will have us go out there, go find three points, niggas go, it'd be night night landing. You know, in Columbus, they got them big ass wild boars, bro. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm from well, the they city. Just be out there with y'all. Well, he, I think he's traumatized with them boys. Bro, bro, <laughs> look, look, look. Bringing up the mugs, man. 
<laughs> Yo, bro, bro. I'm not, Holyfield's got the biggest board. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Bro, whatever was out there, nigga, like, put it like this. Bro, I'm from the city. I ain't never walked in no woods like that. Yeah. Of course, I signed up for the infantry. You know, I got used to it, but... Like, it was a nightland that because I know when I was out there, I don't know if you remember, in 2014, there was a girl, like, one of the, what do you call the people that are for training for being an officer? They're not officers yet. The cadet. The cadet. Okay. There was a girl that got killed by one of them fucking wild boys out there. I was like, yo, bro, I'm not going out there. That's wild. And we would just go out there, sit down. <clears throat> And just eat eat our MRE and then just come back and say we ain't fine. Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. We we did that, and especially when I was an instructor in you know ALC. It was literally we had to take all the students every month out there to Red Diamond. And yeah, do Red Diamond is horrible. And I, we bro. had to we had to walk it, and it got to the point that like now I'm not even worried about the hogs no more. Now I'm worried about the. The the freaking rattlesnake and the, yeah, bro, oh, it's OD bro, it's, it's, it's bad. Like like you Fort Benning, it's you remember that bad one road, it. that one dirt muddy road in Red Diamonds, like sloped. It's yep. red, bro. I hated walking down there. You always see like snakes going through what? it and shit. I used to be like, nah, yeah, this like, shit not We're, for we're me, talking bro. about like timber rattlers, diamond bag. Yeah, like, bro. Yeah, bro. man. Like, that, shit, like, that shit sound wild. You reach wild under, you reach <laughs> under the um, you reach under the shooting where you where you lay down to do your prone and shit at the mm-hmm. range. You reach under there, it might be a rattlesnake yeah, or, or a black always, widow or something. Yeah, yeah, Georgia ain't the place to be fucking around in the woods. Nah, yeah, it's, bro. It's definitely not, bro. I, I experienced we kill we kill seven snakes, seven rattlesnakes in one day. But, a rattlesnake will kill the fuck out of you. But again, <laughs> like when I was when I was in Fort Benning, like I was still me, but I wasn't a shit. Back. I was like, I was like one of them people who was like got good PT score because I, you know, I went to airborne school. Yeah. Uh, I got to go to airsoft, but they they dropped me from the class because they said I didn't have the right paperwork, paperwork. and package. Okay. Paper I was a shit bag though. Nah, I was I was I was straight. Like my first because <laughs> I, I mean that's where I, I at it when I was E three I became a I became a team leader and shit because I was on the line. Mm-hmm. You know, I was with Bradley and shit. I became a gunner and shit as an E three. Normally E three is a driver yeah. and shit like yeah. that, and then. I ranked up. I had a good, I had good leadership. I hated Georgia, but I had good leadership. But it's like when I came out this bitch, I was violent. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah was this, like, is, this is a different I had, army. I had terrible leadership from the time I got to my uh, first duty station, man. Like that nigga just rubbed me the wrong way from the first motherfucking day. He he took full advantage of every power that me and my platoon sergeant gave him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And he was this he was a Mexican guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fat. Thought he was like Al Capone. You know, he <laughs> ran the shop like like the mafia, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? As soon as I got there, you know what I'm saying? He got everybody, you know what I'm saying, standing at attention while he talking to me and shit, you know what I'm saying, pacing around me in slow motion. I never forget it, you know what I'm saying? Nah, niggas. And by the end that. of the conversation, I'm I'm like, just because I answered the question wrong, I'm in the front leaning, I'm like in the push up position until he say I can get up. Pretty much the whole rest of the, because I got there kind of late, so the whole rest of the motherfucking show, I was fucking on the fucking ground, you know what I'm saying? Just so him, for him to prove a point. And the whole time I was in his shop, like at one point, like he would just go to the extreme, you know? He was playing mental games the whole goddamn time. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about the Army, you can't really fight back against that unless uh, unless you want an Article 15 or some shit like that. And he was like, he would like outlaw <clears throat> laughing in the shop, like niggas couldn't laugh. He catch you laugh. Y'all got everybody got to go outside and unload the motherfucking connex oh, yeah, nah, on type shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Now they got that open door uh, policy yeah, yeah, and shit like yeah. that. Like, not when, when people, I was in, man. Yeah, he used to you treat can't. niggas like total like. Yeah, man, he made but, me hate the military, man. I couldn't wait to get. It. So that was just a toxic leader you had. I <laughs> yeah. mean, super you, toxic. You, you had toxic leader in the military for sure. In, in any job, it's not just the military. It could be anywhere. Yeah, you always gonna have. Toxic he made me yeah, hate I definitely, life, got, I definitely got like as a private. You, you, I definitely got fucked with. Like you, we did some extreme shit too. But the infantry but is known. For it's fucking like with it's people. known for. You just get in the infantry. I feel like you just get used to that shit. Yeah. But nope. You, you build a backbone for. But that, nope. But. Like when they fucked us up. They did the mass punishment shit. Like they never like I hated those. They never I, like yeah, singled us out like that. Like at least my leadership. That's why I, was, I had good leadership. Like they never singles us out. But I mean, I got in trouble every every once in a blue. But like, nah, I never really, I never really fucked up. And the thing is, when I did fuck up, like I was like, you know, I was super skinny. I was run, a runner, yeah, and shit like that. Like you yeah, couldn't you really could, smoke. If you had me. a three three hundred PT yeah, score. Yeah, my like, PT score was high all the time. You it, it's smoke. like you're you're a stud. Like no nobody would. You could probably get 
over doing some stuff and they won't even mess yeah, with Yeah, to where they, because I was, and I was always good physically. Because I think in, in, in the infantry when you're a private, the only thing you have to do is be is, fit. Is be, be fit. Be fit and listen. And listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and if That's you, the army as too. long as you're doing that, like, you know, even when they smoke you, they make jokes. They'll be like, oh, this probably doesn't even affect you, Smith. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then they just smoke a, uh, you can't smoke a rock, yeah. but you sure can make it hot. Yeah, that's what we <laughs> say. Like, yeah, man. And like, so I, it was like a pretty easy ride for me. Like, so I, and I had good leadership, bro. It was just like the little things that made me mad about the military. It was like when you, when I got a, you know, a parking ticket, the first aren't got to know and shit. Yeah. It, it was like, bro, they got too much control like that, over too my too life. Too much control. <laughs> yeah, it's life. too much control, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But for some, some people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they can do 20 years. Yeah. Know? And that's why I say I respect the people. Yeah. Especially the people with like, you know, especially, us people of color like i really respect because i'm especially you being in there you know it, how it, it is it, in it, it. that must have been a hell of a it must have been a hell of a transition though like it, after after all that time it it was like in the beginning it was like okay i'm i'm like bro i never had this feeling ever in my life that the minute i signed out on leave and i knew i had retired and I left post, and I'm looking back the rear view mirror and seeing the gate, yeah, and say I'm never coming back to this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like literally I felt like I left prison. Yeah, like yeah. that's the, the, the like the best feeling. Like you're leaving, like like a lot of good memories and a lot of bad memories, but you also leaving. You know the the history that you made. Yeah, yeah. You know, I definitely believe you because I felt like I swear, like uh, you know, and and I'm not even saying this to be funny. But I really felt like when I left, it was like one of the best days of my life. Me I'm, I'm too. Being like, I'm not it, even it, saying it, that to be funny. It, like, it, it was a good feeling. I'm like definitely was one of the best days. But of I res- my life. but I, but at the same time, I like I respect the military because I, I had a lot of like you know growing up to do, bro. Like that shit taught me yeah. a lot. That's why I joined the military to like make a man out of myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I had just I had just uh, had a kid not, that I wasn't ready for. You know what I'm saying? That's why I joined to like. Yeah. Be able to send money back to you know send my baby mama for my for my daughter and shit you know what I'm saying and that's what got me through like basic training and everything and shit like that. <clears throat> that that's why I initially joined and to pay off some student loans and yeah. shit. But yeah. it's shit that pop up today in situations and just it's like some military stuff is kind of ingrained in my it is. persona, you know, yeah. and that it, that I can't like. I can't lie that it, it has helped me out in life, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's the relationships you built. Man, I met so many yeah, yeah, people, yeah. you know? So much people that... Well, I could look back, like right now, uh, one of my best friend, um, he's he was my company commander. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, I'm I'm proud of him because he's he's a colonel now. Mm-hmm. He's a colonel. He's about to take over Garrison Barberia. He's literally going to be oh, in charge of... That's, uh, that's big shit. All the poles in home fields build second graph. Like he's the, the, the garrison him, commander. Man. Like, and I'm 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 looking up to him, this guy. We were just hanging out this past weekend. Like, I'm like, bro, like I am so happy that I met you and you was my leader. But I'm also happy that you made it this far and you're still going. Yeah. But I always tell him, bro, like, why are you still doing this, man? <laughs> like, why? How long he been in? She. Probably like twenty four years. Like in my one of my other best friend, he's about to hit thirty. Thirty yes. sorry years. Major. He's in four. Some urban. people. Some <laughs> people say that shit's easy though. So like, like, so nah, I got once you get to that point, maybe you yeah. just signing papers Bro, and it, shit. It, but I'm, like my my poem that I'm trying to make, right? These are my best friends, and I'm giving them my vibe because you know at the end of the day, okay. Also, the jo- uh, our jokes aside, right? So. Why do I don't understand why people do like they feel like they they have to stay because some do it for financial, some do it for other reason, or some p- people are like, uh, I'm just gonna do it because then the longer I stay, the more money I get for retirement. But they don't look at it as like, yo, you could retire at 20 years. I retire at 38 years old. Mm-hmm. Which you could very, retire. Which you could start a new young. career. Yeah, yeah. And now you're not only getting one check, you're getting two check. You you could get three. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, why are you cutting yourself short? Yeah. You still tying yourself to 10 more years to to 
Uncle Sam. But I also think it's the brainwash. There's a lot of brainwashing. Definitely. Too, but because it's, they kind of make it seem like you're not going to have a good life. Yeah, life it's going to be leave. a hard transition and stuff like that. Before yeah, like I said, you get used to anything. You but know? but it, it it also is how you prepare yourself. Because a lot of people retire and are not prepared. They have nothing. They have nothing really. Even with the retirement, they still can't live right. Wow. You know, because they, they're not prepared. They didn't start from day one. They I mean, I think you are in a very low percentage of people that join the military with the intention, like, from the jump that you've going to do 20 years. But that's, what, like, that's pretty rare, that's, I would I would, I would assume. Though. I ain't yeah. going to lie to you, bro. You would that's determine, impressive. motherfucker, that you completed yeah, that when, shit, when, you know? When, 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 like, the way I, I, I was taught and I was growing up, it's like, when my eyes is focused on something... It's like, I won't stop until I reach it. Yeah. You know, and same thing now that, you know, now that, that I retire and, and, you know, the club was closed during Corona for two years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my DJ gigs pretty much got put to a stop. Mm -hmm. And I, I went from uh, pretty much a full-time DJ, part-time on bass, you know, and, and now I have nothing, mm -hmm. you know, but... Sila always have something that he's passionate about. Yeah. And what I was passionate about before, I, even when I was in the military, I was always good at video games. And I, I, I play video games. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I, was, I was playing, you know, the 007 GoldenEye on Hell Nintendo yeah. 64. Nintendo was 64, uh, the purple bro, joint. That was that joint. Man, <laughs> that, that game was like... I used to play that shit too. I don't that know was shit about it now. That, that literally set me like. I okay. mean, that game was definitely. I mean, it's top. It's, it's rated. I believe number three of the one of the best games on Nintendo sixty four. It's like and, one of the pioneers yeah, of like first and, person shooters. And right? it, it was a little shooter. before. It's, I think it was a little before. It's uh, what's the word before it's time? Like you yeah, know, the yeah, way, yeah, the graphics and yes, shit. Yes, yes, yes. And then from there, I went from 007, I went to American Army, and then American Army was like more like a realistic. Mm -hmm. First person shooter. That was on PC, right? No, that was on on never uh, heard of that. on Xbox 360. Xbox 360. And then that. and then Call of Duty came out. Mm. Mm the first one. The yeah. first one. And then I was like, okay, and now I'm hooked. Now I'm you know, I'm infantry. I'm I'm fucking playing a game that is literally what I do in real life is just like literally shooting people and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, so yeah, like I was, I, talk right there. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was hooked. Shoot him know? in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and then that, that's kind of what, what, when, when the club went to a standstill and, you know, everybody panicking because a lot of DJs were full time DJs and that's all they, li they live with that money. Yeah. You know, and now there's no fucked a lot of yeah, people up. Yeah, it man. was like people were like crackheads out there, like, yeah. like yo, you got a job for me, man? And, and had to it, do, had to get it how they live, had to do what they yeah, had to do. Yeah, shit. but it was sad. It was sad for seeing a lot of my friends go through that. But then at the same time, I was like, man, I'm glad I did my twenty because it didn't affect, straight. It didn't affect me at all. You yeah. know, what I mean? so I was like, bro. But then I was like, okay, what am I going to invest my time since I can't DJ? And then I met the right people in in the gaming industry. They they were like, "Yeah, you, you know, how about you just just start your stream on your Xbox?" And I'm like, "What? I didn't know nothing." I was like, okay. I, "I just started to stream, mm -hmm. all right, whatever." But back then, there was a, a you know how we got Twitch, you know, as a streaming platform. They also had Mixer, Mixer, yeah. Before it uh, went to Facebook, yeah. Okay, because now I, you can do it from the Facebook. And yeah. yeah. When so was this? Like that was like two years ago. Okay. So Mixer was. The competition of Twitch. Mm -hmm. All right. So I I signed up for Mixer, created my account and everything. And now I found out that, oh, you can game and make money. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. Let, let me let me let me look more into this. But it's a huge commitment to get to the point where you making money no, with it, I'm right? Not, you can not, start making money like literally like seven, ten days after you start. I mean like money though. Yeah, like, like money. Nah, You're, I wouldn't say you have to be, com I don't say, I don't know, it's not like making, I would say, it's not like making a YouTube channel and, and doing stuff like that because literally it's so, it, it's so easy to stream in like it's so easy to when you're ga when you're gaming like you know mm -hmm. you can set on Twitch like your schedule the time you're gonna plan on getting on so they know mm -hmm. and then bro you doing and on top of it, you kind of doing something you just like to do so it's yes. like different than making content you know what I'm saying yes. yeah but I mean it is content but 
Like and people just because I'm not a gamer, you know. I done mm. play some games here and there, you know what I'm saying. I used to play 2K and fucking NBA Live. Yeah. That was my shit. I used to fuck niggas up, and but I never like had. I like games, but I always I would be playing them and like feeling like, am I wasting time right now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like that's just you know honestly how I used to feel. You know what I'm saying? Like I could be doing because I, I always felt like okay. We've seen that gaming can be uh, like you can be a professional gamer. You know what I'm saying? It's leagues now. It's like people making like millions playing games and shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Gaming is 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 evolutionized to a point. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. But you know what I'm saying? Back then, it was it was a few people that was maybe making some money playing games, and I would I would just feel like you would have to devote so much time. You do to be. You know what I'm saying? One of the best people playing whatever game. Yeah, but that's 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 not see that's not true though. I know a gamer who he just does a podcast. He kind of like talks, plays, does a podcast, and he's not even really good at the game. He just plays. He's just he's, playing he's games, making money, nigga. He just they but just who like is playing, him. Like people the donate people, into yeah, him while so, he plays. So, so the yeah. people people watching. like watching other people play games yes. so much. Yes, or they might or that it, they will tip you. Yes. Look, it could be us right now. Like us, Lee, right now we could just be streaming, talking about what we're talking about right now, being weak on there, and you know playing a game people at the same are just time. Like, they like the community. They like what you're doing. They like you know what. They, Bro, you they, could do this right, and you could have been doing this right now on Twitch. Play, and, 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 and and playing and, a game at the same time. You could be playing, just doing this by yourself. Just just doing your podcast on Twitch. Yeah. And you build your community. But how do you garner more more of a following to your Twitch? Is it like a, because like that's the beauty of YouTube, you know, like when you post on YouTube, they have a feed, they have a, a, a front feed that, an <laughs> algorithm that feeds people shit that they would probably be interested in, but ain't hip to yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Twitch, Twitch, YouTube is not, introduces people to new content de- depending so, on how they fucking. So the way the, the 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 Twitch is working right now is is, is Twitch is is good for streaming, but they don't have an algorithm like YouTube where you know it it, it pushes out to millions of people. You, you got to kind of come and there with your the audience. Community, this is what the community has been trying to tell Twitch to do. Yeah. You know, to try to do something similar for us to get discovered. Exactly. We have to do IG reels. We have to do TikTok. Mm, TikTok we have to do reels. YouTube shorts. We have to you do YouTube long content for us to be discovered by other people. So they'll go to Twitch and check you out. Yes. Live. So, so just like me, if I give you a prime example, right? I was, I was just a, a nobody, right? I just... I was just grinding Call of Duty, you know, doing the trying to grind the leaderboard, trying to make my name known out there, right? Yeah. So one day I I'm out here, and and I kill I kill Tim the Tatman, and and these are big name streamers. Name, Tim the yeah. Tatman, you know this nigga? I know a thing. I know a lot of streamers. Bro. Okay, I, yeah. I'm in the gaming world. Okay, like, I'm, yeah. I don't know shit about these. I'm I'm yeah. so genuinely asking you these questions <laughs> yeah, right now. So Tim the Tatman, <laughs> Nay shot. With the hundred, and they, I think eight, Nate Shot is the hundred thief uh, owner. Okay. Um, and then you have, and and then Symphony is another big name streamer. So these are like pro level and high level streamers. Yeah. That I just kill, and immediately because I kill these fools, my chat went from like having five years to having a hundred and something viewers mm. in in seconds. Right, clout, so, clout points for killing them niggas. Yes, and then you, I mean you're not really supposed to kill them niggas. Yeah, okay. they, because they're they, they're, yeah. they're that good. So immediately I start getting followers, and then and, and then the accusations start. Are you stream sniping? And stream sniping is like you looking at yeah. their stream, yeah, and you're trying to target them, and you're like, cheating. Yeah, kind of like you cheating to kill them. And I'm like, bro, I don't got time for that shit. That's like a big no no in the gaming community, right? Yes. It's like it's like when you're playing on the game. Like, but is it easy to like, do? It's, it's like, like you playing no, your game not. and you got another it's, screen it's, where you watching their screen. Some people can master that. Some people are good at it, but you got to think about it. That's, like you, not only I'm in Germany, right, mm-hmm. and they're in the states, but there's a lag between the broadcast, the right? Servers and shit. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's true. So they so, give it. They give them that. an advantage. So that too, but they, then at the same time, the, the stream could be 10, 15 second delay. 15 seconds yeah. yeah so that means that you in your screen you looking like he's sitting right here but he probably already 
Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's not like exactly the same timing, but like but it fifteen seconds is a lot though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But it doesn't look it doesn't look bad though. It's not it, like But you could get killed. I would think you could get no, I'm not fucked talking up about pretty. I'm I'm not talking about in the game. I'm talking about like you're looking at somebody's screen. Oh, you know, that's when, what you, they screen call, yeah, when uh, you screen sniping. Yeah, when you screen sniping. Okay. And, and there's that in, that delay. So some people get real real good at it. Okay. But but for me to be concentrating at the game and looking at other monitors, I'm like literally looking at another monitor to try to Fine. guess where he, where he's at. Like yeah, that's no. wow. Yeah, but but they accused me of that right. So moving the story forward, yeah, you know that that happened in Mixer, and then I'm on Twitch, and then I'm over here gaming, having my, my good time with my friends, and I kill Z Laner. Mm-hmm. Z Laner was one of the reason why I went viral because not only he accused me of stream <laughs> sniping, he was playing with Tinder <laughs> Tapman that day too. Okay, and Tinder Tapman was saying I was stream sniping, and then I was like, you know what? I'm tired of shit. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Okay. I'm tired of it. Like I, I'm gonna put an end to this. I made literally a YouTube video. Yeah. From start of my game to finish, to prove my innocence that I was not doing this. Okay. And this bro, went viral. And I put it out to the public, and then I tagged some people, and and bro, it went viral, right? So now you have like people that are out there like looking for cheaters, mm-hmm. like using my video and creating content out of it. So that just gave me more exposure. And then another person made the content out of it. Another. And it was like this, and then on top of that, they, you know, that it's a it's a quad game. They have a cheater as a fifth person. So when when they get killed or 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 they want somebody to get, like, if they see that they, the lobby's getting fried, they send a cheater out there to go kill the people that are frying the lobby so they they look good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I never knew. I didn't. know So that. It's, it's called boosting. Uh, see, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Know. So they got it's a four, it's a quad game. They got five people, and one of them is a cheater. And they and when I kill, I wipe. I wipe the squad. Right. Yeah. They told Jerome to go kill me. So and, so so in Call of Duty, when yeah. you play the game, you have duos, trios, and quads. Okay. But they have a fifth person. Even though you're, how playing, can you have a fifth person? I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, do it's it, like a it's, hack it's, or something. It's, no, it's it's like okay, you're you're you could be in the same Discord. Okay, you're talking to oh in Discord. Oh yeah, yeah I didn't you think could, of that. So they're not on the same team, but they're not on the same. They're team. not on the same team, but they're using him as a fifth person. as a fifth person. You get it? So, so he can add. Okay, so so when you load up into Call of Duty, you can load up into a quad game as a solo, mm-hmm. and then you have the squad. So they also have another chatting service. So normally when you go on PlayStation, Xbox, PC. You can go through the chat like regularly, like you know, if I add you to my my PlayStation party, if you have a PlayStation, mm-hmm. right? But they have something called Discord, and Discord is like it's it's you can all you need is the computer, and you can it's just like a regular chat room. It's like yeah. how you hear me, yeah. how we, yeah, yeah, how we yeah, hear yeah. each other. I've right heard now. of Discord before. So, yeah, so yeah. they use that that solo out of the fourth out to of bring the, in the fifth man to I kill got you. Them But shit. I went and captured their perspective, right? Uh-huh. And I didn't even know this was going on. I went and captured their perspective, and then clear as day, Tim the Tap Man, say, Jerome, uh, are you still here? Hey, we need your help, Jerome. We need your help. And I'm looking at, well, he got he got Tim the Tap Man, Z Laner, he got Cloaksy, and they got somebody else, but it's Jerome. So you heard him talking to the fifth yeah, man. Yeah, he talking to the fifth man. Bro, when I when I died, it was only like like eight people left in the game. Mm. My squad w- and and four other people. Yeah, we we're about to win the game. He called a hacker to come and kill us. Oh, and man. he's hacking. He got all the hacks in the world. He's famous in the world. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a famous hacker. So these big Twitch dudes, they be they not opposed to cheating, is what you saying? So yeah, well, they got this new anti cheat um, that is on Call of Duty. Yeah, so but it, it don't work. It don't really work. It, so it, it works, but it don't work. Like. That's why I don't play. I don't play the regular map no more. I play. Man, I Reaper. suck. I suck at Call of Duty, man. I can play the mobile version. I'm a beast on the mobile version. I be playing that <laughs> shit on the people, iPad. A lot of people have been playing the mobile. I like the mobile version. It's, I ain't never played. nigga. When I play the real Call of Duty, I I take you two steps. And no, yeah, you gonna get smoked. <laughs> you, got, you, know, you got people like me out there smoking you. No way, you play, man. Play, you I, play I, don't, I don't understand how people do that shit. You play like regular multiplayer too. 
Like, I used bro. to I used to be, you know, like I ain't gonna kill, lie, kill confirm, you know. I was a, a T, I was a, a I was a TDM, you know. I I like I like the hardcore stuff. Yeah. I don't like the core stuff because you take it too many shots to kill somebody. Yeah, I like I play hardcore, right? Right, saying I play hardcore. I'm hardcore. Yeah. So you yeah. get when you die one, 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 like, one two like, bullets, you're down. You're, you're down. You're, you're, oh you're damn. Dead. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, that's the the mode I used to play. But then the BR came out. Yeah. And I was exposed. Yeah. What the fuck to, is a BR? Battle it's Royale. Battle Royale. So I the, love Battle Royale, but on the mobile version. Though. So the, the <laughs> first, y'all don't shame me. <laughs> so the first time I played Battle Royale was when PUBG came out. PUBG, PUBG. Yeah, yeah, on the PC. Yep, I was playing PUBG, but that was on. Xbox I never played too. that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played. I played PUBG. Yep, and that was my first BR experience, and I was hooked. From that and, moment. And, yeah, I like that. But shit. if you hopped on PUBG in a minute, I can't play it no more. Now. No, I can't after play you play it. Call of Duty, it's like, it. damn, this shit I never sucks. played yeah, it. I can't play it. Because I was so at a point I was addicted to that Call of Duty mobile. I ain't even go. I ain't even go okay. Yeah, so that, that's how it, I was addicted to it. was like PUBG came out um on PC for on stream on, on Steam, and then it came out on Xbox. And then for, and then it was like the dawn of Fortnite. Fortnite then came out and then they made that first Call of Duty blackout. Blackout. And Blackout is what kind of took Would you say Fortnite is more popular than Call of Duty? Or was it at a point? Well, Mm. it all depends because if you put Call of Duty... You got to remember, Call of Duty got different categories. You got multiplayer. Now you have the BR. Yeah. You know, so if you put... I mean, as far as that. If you put the multiplayer and the BR together, no, it's not. I wouldn't say that. I would say Fortnite... I would say Fortnite. At a point, like at the like highest point, like we want to talk about like more popular, like money wise. I would say Fortnite. Might Fortnite, be. Fortnite got the most money because sure. because of the children and kids. It's yes. more like it's more kid friendly, yeah. so it's, it becomes popular. But I mean, in the adult world, I would say. But by view, if you look, let's say we look in, yeah, yeah we yeah. look in Twitch right now, right? So if we go say search for. Let's say Warzone, and you surf for uh, uh, Fortnite. You look at the views. What game mode is being watched the most right now? Call of Duty Warzone has sixty-eight thousand people watching it. Okay, right, but Fortnite is gonna have more probably. Hold on, let me see. Uh, so PUBG got fifty-two, fifty-two thousand. Wow, people still play that. Yeah. 52,000. I thought that shit was just a fucking mobile app. I didn't even know you could play that shit on a PC. Mm, Damn. Yeah. So. What'd you just say? Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite? I'm I'm looking for Fortnite right now. Oh, okay. So Fortnite right now is beating Call of Duty. Call of Duty is dying because of Caldera. So Fortnite has 214,000. Whoa. That's a big uh, viewers. But again, big it's, difference it's right like there. the difference. But was, you got it, kids. You got the kids. Like Fortnite, when Fortnite first came out, Fortnite was, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of kids were on. It was like more adults because, you know, and then they started, Fortnite started making all that money and they started doing the collaborations with the Star Wars, yes. Marvel comics, like kids yeah. stuff. And it's because, you know, when the dances, my in two there little boys and play that. it. My two little boys, they, they nice as fuck. I think they got a lot of popularity because they was incorporating the game, the 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 dances in there. Yeah, they went too, and it was like in the media that they wasn't like, like Soldier Boy was trying to sue them or something for like the crank that or some shit, man. Like yeah, but I I played Fortnite a few times, but like I was saying earlier, the whole building shit like yeah threw me off. I was like I ain't I ain't trying to learn how to fucking throw up all these damn walls and and fight and all that shit. They also added bots. They also added mm-hmm. the bots in there. I don't like that shit. Like, I like Fortnite when it, when it first started. It was really good. The map now it's like you know the see. I know, of course, the seasons got to go on and making the money, yeah. but I I I, yeah. I just couldn't get into it. I only play it with my sons when they ask, <coughs> and I play a couple times. But what but, I wanted to ask you though is like about the commit because you like all in with the I'm game and in. shit, I'm, right? I'm, I'm right now I'm all the way in. So like what is your what is your streaming schedule and how important is it to like have a streaming schedule and like set times where people can like tune so, in to watch you and so shit? So it it is I'm making changes right now uh because it got to the point that I was streaming 12, 14, sometimes 16 hours. Sitting stream a day? A day. It's a lot of hours, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I I got like I said, I was sitting there and 
I was grinding because I was grinding. I wanted to be in the top 20. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was grinding those hours. And the only way you're going to get in the top 20 is you got to grind. There's yeah. no way around it. Like, you got to win a lot of games every day. Yeah, okay, and, okay. And, and it got to the point that I made the top 20. Well, at first it was like, ah, I just want to make top 1,000. And then I grinded, I grinded, I grinded, I grinded and made top 1,000. And then... Hmm. And then I started playing, just kept playing. I was like, okay, I'm still playing. Kobe, you was probably going stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's right so, on time. So, so I was like, that's why they like we can't even go to the gym or nothing. I stopped going to the gym. So I'm like, man, I'm here. I'm I'm invested all the way in. You yeah. Know? So, so I'm I'm in there the the 12, 16 hours and and freaking Miami. My wife, she was not down with it. I was just about to ask you, like, yeah, how does she, this affect family time and life? Yeah. And, well, when money comes into play, man. But it's not really the, my, my with my wife. It's not. A, it's not about the money. Like it's it's the, the money. time. It's the time. She want quality time. Yeah. She want family time. All this mm-hmm. stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But but she also knows that this is my outlet. Yeah, like she understands after the military and after the trauma that I experienced in the military and stuff. This is my outlet. You know, I don't drink. I hardly drink. I don't smoke. I don't have no no crazy bad habit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She, where she gonna? Well, you know where she gonna find me in the basement? That's yeah, what's yeah. up though. Playing nah, nah. games and shit. Like, nah, it, could my, be, it could be much worse. My wife, my wife, my <laughs> wife is like that too. Like my wife is kind of like you know, she wants me to you know make sure I'm. You know, I can get carried away when I'm on the, especially when you're on there with your friends and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can get a little carried away, and you know, I'll be on that shit. You know, oh shit, damn, forgot the baby in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. you know, man, you know, I was playing, yeah. but yeah. you know, she, you can get lost in yeah, that shit. Yeah, I get can, lost for sure, can, for sure. You can, but she knew that I was very invested in this, and I wanted to grind, and I wanted to make it to a certain point in the leaderboard. Yeah, you know, and then I, I, I passed the one thousand, and then I'm like. I'm getting close to the 100, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm already here. Yeah. What am I going to do? And then this this already started developing, you know, more generations of views to my channel. If you search my name on, on the COD Tracker, bro, I got like almost, I'm getting close to 10,000 people already searched me. Mm. You know, and that already tells me that, you know, you got people that are way higher than me, and they don't have that much search. Mm. So people are actually looking to see what the hell I'm doing. Or, yeah. You know, and then when I killed those big name streamers and I posted the video and it went viral, I gained like, bro, I, I literally gained a thousand subscriber on YouTube in 48 hours. Mm. Monetized. So, Monetized. So, because that, all, the only thing I needed at that time is watch time. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, can, yeah. I, can I ask a question? Like, so basically what you're saying is you're not adding somebody like me in your game. <laughs> why not? Why not? Would you play? Would you play? I with play me? with everybody. I'm, oh, okay. I mean, because you know, like, I thought it would ruin like your stats or some shit. Like no, it, like I, I literally like I set ways to, you know, I do have my team, mm-hmm. but the problem in too is like, you know, now that COVID is starting to like die off. Yeah, die off. A yeah, lot of did, people went did back. away with the mask today. I was in yeah. the grocery store, no mask. Yeah. I felt like I was doing the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah I, I felt, felt like, like I was, I was in. Am- I felt like I was in Amsterdam smoking weed, walking by the police. <laughs> <laughs> like is this shit, this shit, that shit legal? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I, I, I had, I stood up a clan. So you know, we have a group of guys repping the clan. You know, it's called the Silo Clan. Kind of branded to myself to, mm-hmm. but it's literally competitive league operators. Okay, but I just tied it in with my name, so it knows. That's smart. Are you thinking about making a team? He yeah, did. Like, oh, like, yeah, you made a team. I made it like a like a how, how you like a regiment. <laughs> I, I joined because I, I I really be I be really yeah. So so the, like, the the requirement is is you gotta have more than three hundred wins in Caldera. Do I got three hundred? I gotta check, man. And then you gotta have a one point five KD or higher. Oh, I got I got like a one point nine. I think. The fuck is a KD? Yeah, you your kill, kill. today ratio. You said one point five. One point five or higher. That's like got, how many kills no, you get per point. day? I could check. Matter of fact. Yeah, if you got 1.9, you're good. Yeah, I think I got like a one point something, man. Maybe <laughs> not a 1.9. I think I'm pushing it. I got a zero. I haven't been on call, I haven't been on call dude, because I've been playing a lot of Elder Ring, man. <laughs> yeah, but see, then then again, like I was literally in Zero. Cal- I went from, from no. Dance, and then now we did the Caldera, but they, they killed kind of the game, the pace. The, the, I don't like the new map. 
Yeah, Rebirth. a lot of people are are going away and switching to other games. I play and, Rebirth, like so. Yeah. I've been playing Rebirth, and, and 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 I just started playing Rebirth about a month and a week ago, and I already got five hundred wins. Is Rebirth yeah, I, I just a, like another Rebirth, mode of Call of Duty? Of it, or? Yeah, it's it's like very very. It's a smaller action. map, and you resp- like normally in Call or just of Duty, another map. Mm-hmm. It's another map, but when you the, thi- the thing about okay. the thing about uh the so you got the battle royale, the normal one, and then you have Rebirth. What is different is like if you die in the regular one, you you they, they wipe out your team. You go to the gulag, and then if everybody dies, you die. Okay, this I mean it's like that too on Rebirth, but Rebirth you, you just keep you just respawning, respawning and shit. And shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like as long as as long as there's and one it's person, madness. yes, it's madness. As long I don't as, like that mode. As like long that. as there's one person alive in your team. Okay, you just keep dropping out yeah, the sky. You and shit. Yeah, but it's yeah, fire. You got a countdown, and as soon as it's, it's too count- much for me, man. I respect, I respect y'all gamers and shit, but I just can't. You know, what I'm saying? I got too much real life shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this at the end of the day, uh, it's fun I, when you get like a group on there. You that like joint. him, you know? I mean, I I respect. You know, we talked about this. I respect what you're doing because I know you grinding it out to get to a goal in it. Yeah, you know what it's, I'm saying? it's a business. You know, it's like, a business think, venture at, for you. At the end of the day, is it's like I'm treating this like a business, just like a DJ business kind of like and you enjoy you, it yeah, yeah so i'm i'm enjoying it i'm using it as an outlet but i'm also monetizing everything that i'm doing you know mm-hmm. so balance, it, but now i'm just trying to find a balance i used to stream those you know 14 16 hours now i'm trying to cut it down to like you know to six hours but then guess what just because i'm done streaming i, I still got to create content so yeah. i got to Edit the content, right? And then I got to post it on real. I Do you post edit it. everything yourself or you got I like been, contractors I, and shit? I've been doing a lot of stuff myself, but then hey, I got overwhelmed at one point. And it's, then, it's a lot. And I hire um, a guy to do my, my thumbnails and, and do some of my, my stuff, putting it together. Yeah. Because I'm already doing most of the work. I just got to send it to him and he'll put it together and do the effects or whatever. But yeah. now I'm getting to the point that I'm not doing a lot of it myself. Okay. But I have to cut down those 16 hours to, you know, to six hours. And so it's dedicate. not such a workload with the edit. Yeah, shit. because then I could use three hours to edit my my mm-hmm. my content and push it out. Because you got to, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be pushing content every day out. Yeah, man. You got to stay con- consistent if you really yeah. want to gar- garner a fucking... Um, <laughs> And, audience you know and youtube is is, is hit or miss is like you it's it's a shark tank out there you know really is man <laughs> you but youtube is a hell of an outlet you know is. for content creators and stuff you know what i'm saying but it's it's a gauntlet you know what i'm saying like it it's like you can put like if you gonna start some shit like even with this podcast like if you're gonna start some shit on youtube if you really want to be successful with it you got to, like, keep that shit rolling, you know? You got to keep pushing out content to people and, like... Yeah, because they, they, it's <clears throat> like a TV show, man. It's like if the TV show, it, your, their favorite TV show is not coming on every week. Yeah. Well, they're going to go find another TV show. Yeah, because there's too many TV shows to watch, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. But once you got a person and you keep it consistent, then, you know what I'm saying, you Gucci. You know? Yeah, so my one of my goals was to be a, a, a YouTube partner, and I'm, I just... Made that not too long ago. Yeah, congratulations so on yeah. that. We still so, working on that on our channel. Yeah, but we yeah so get we there. like it's it's like I said, it's a grind. Like the watch hour, it's it's a grind. Like we got it four thousand watch hours. Yeah, within like a year's time. Some some people some people can't get that. You know, and that's the that's the hardest. Oh, we part. ain't gonna stop. We grinding, man. Yeah, we, we grinding. We, we almost grinding. there. We like we third of the way there. Yeah. So that's like I said, it's it's as long as you staying consistent, putting content out there, it's. it's it will eventually pay out. If the people like what you're putting out, they're going to come back. Yeah, and the sure. same thing with me, like on, on Twitch, you know, for you to be a Twitch partner, you got to have 75 concurrent viewers. And that's hard as shit. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, you got every time you start your stream. Got to have 75, 75, at least 75. At least 75 people or higher. You a Twitch partner? No, that shit's a grind. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, so okay. that's what I'm grinding for right now. It's like it's it's not. You'll get it, man. You know, mix it was a little easier because you know, mix it was like, like, all right, you hey, leave a tab open for me, and and as long as the tab is open and and, and your channel's there, you are getting the 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 views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You send and Twitch if you're not active, they they could tell. Yeah, because that's if it's bots, is it bots or if it's a tab or if it's. 
They uh, won't count to your watch hours. Because that shit says watching some, uh, you got one viewer watch and it'll say it right there in the yeah. corner. Yeah. Like, yeah. That shit tells you. And, and 75 to uh, as soon as you start your stream to the, day, the time you end. People, 75 people watching is not easy. I'm telling you right yeah, now. Yeah, I can imagine. How how long have you been streaming on Twitch, though? One year. One year. That's yeah, good, some, people, some people have been taking them six, seven years to get Twitch partner. Woo. I'm at one year, and I'm sitting. I normally get to about 30. Some days, some good days, I get to 40 views. How long you been on YouTube, though? About not, six not a months. year, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I literally got partnered in YouTube within like three, four months. That's good. Well, man. after I I went viral when I killed some people and and people just started making videos out of me and yeah and then I went back and killed them the second time. And Cloud points. Yeah, it's shit. Like, I felt like that about uh, TikTok. You know, I was when I was first doing. It, I was like, damn, people are fucking with my content. Like, yeah. and then I just stopped. You fell off of it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of TikTok like, is weird too, man. Even yeah. the Quogos shit that I that I started. People starting to really like gravitate toward them little clips I'll be yeah. putting out with the subtitles and shit. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, though. Yeah, as far as the internet and you want to be a con- content creator, man, the the best, the only way is to just put shit out and be consistent. Let people. And I think, I think, like you know, <clears throat> another thing is like, don't worry, like do that shit because you like it. Because like, for example, like this podcast, I yeah. like doing this shit. Like, yeah, me too. Like. Honestly, I'm not really, you know, of course I care, but I'm I'm not really paying attention to who's following. Like, I just, I because I generally enjoy the time, you know what I'm saying? Same way you enjoy, your, you know, doing your game and, like, you know, just be out there, put shit out all the time, be consistent, like you said. And mm-hmm. I think I think everything, if you're doing something you're passionate about, it'll fall through, you know and this I mean? is, this yeah. is crazy because it's like, this is actually my first time and, and like I think in two years to actually go hang out with some people that I know. Two like, years. Two years, bro. Like like <laughs> to to actually like like mingle, have a drink and, and yeah, actually yeah. talk because you know, even when COVID, you, you can only meet one family, right? Yeah. True that. And, and it was like if okay, he was following them. Yeah, we, we <laughs> my wife was following because she works in the hospital. To the T, okay. Yeah, okay. so everything was to the T, you know, and it was like, bro, like I can't even go. Oh, I can't, I can't go with you to go visit. Like, what kind of shit is? I'm part of the family. <laughs> nah, it's too many. Like, okay. what? Damn, what? Nah, that was a crazy time period. Man. Yeah, crazy I was just like, man, I, I, I be in the basement. All right, y'all go do your thing. I'll be here. Okay. Like, and, and luckily, you know, knocking on wood, we've been staying, you know, safe from everything. And, and but there's a lot of people around our circle is just. Just getting it left and right, and I'm sitting like, shit, man. we got it. Yeah, we got it just recently, you know what I'm saying? But I made it through the majority of it without getting it. Because I was careful, you know, but, you know, my tattoo shop is in my career oh, yeah, and that's, shit. That's but like, I, would, I would follow all the rules, the 2G, 3G shits. I would make people f- show up with fucking tests and make sure they had to be vaccinated and boosted when that came around mm-hmm. and all that stuff. You know, I was careful because, I like, when... They shut down everything. That was when my son was born and shit, you know? So I was, like, mostly scared for him because we ain't know shit about shit. And I was like, whatever happened, I do not want my my newborn son to get it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So first time I went outside to the grocery store, I damn near fucking wrapped myself in a fucking trash bag, you know? Because <laughs> I was like, I am not fucking, I'm spraying myself well, we, with. We got to get food. Yeah, right I now. was like, I got to go to the grocery store. But I, I felt, it felt like an episode, of, like that Outbreak movie or some uh, shit. Like fucking, uh, a zombie apocalypse. Bird Box. Type. Yeah, yeah, Bird Box. Bird Box. <laughs> yeah, yeah nigga. You could go outside and look at the mother. <laughs> yeah, I was outside like, you know, all wrapped up and shit with gloves on and shit. Spr- I, I mean, I rode a scooter to the fucking, uh, you know, one of them, them little uh, electric mm-hmm. rental scooters and shit. I sprayed that bitch down before I got <laughs> on it. I'm like, shit. Shit, we used to, we used to the house, shit, watching Netflix. Yeah, because the last we time. Chilling. Watching Tiger King the and last, shit. <laughs> the last time I, I hung out with you was when you did your music video. And we was out there in, in, oh, in, yeah. in the wall. For Harmonious and shit. Yeah, Harmonious and, and then... Um, I was still DJing at Resiate during that time. Mm-hmm. Did you start back DJing since the clubs? No, I open? got my first book in in May. I'm going back. May to what? The, uh, I think it's the 12th. Uh, my my birthday the next day. Oh <laughs> damn! The 12th. I'm gonna be at the one, but I'm gonna be on the Latino side. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm doing the reggaeton stuff. I'm gonna so. be in, I'm gonna be in Turkey anyways on my birthday. So yeah, shouts Turkey. out to Gino. Yeah, Gino. That's my Gino. nigga Gino. 
I haven't seen Gino in like over T since Corona, since the last day we was at the club. Then, yeah, he uh he he had a rough time during the Corona shit too, cause you know he he, he had, had he had the business, one. Right? He started Geno's yeah. downtown, like in the main uh, shopping area, mm-hmm. in um, like the basement part of a uh, big department <coughs> store. I can't remember the name of the department yeah. store, but yeah, it was a little uh, snack shop. He would sell like little burritos and pizzas and shit, and mm-hmm. cupcakes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a little side was, hustle. Yeah, a little side hustle. It was a nice little shop, you know, in a shopping yeah. mall in mm-hmm. like over there by like Saturn and. Uh, I never went. I think it was in World. World down there in Nuremberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't but, think I saw Nuremberg for like two years when COVID was coming. Oh, out. Yeah. I didn't even come outside. I, 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 this was be my motherfucking I, stomping ground. Not I, so much now, but I haven't been. I don't remember even being in Nuremberg in the last yeah, two years. I wasn't really in Nuremberg like that when COVID was going on. I was just home. I was chilling. Yeah, I was at home, man. I was just doing the whole family thing, and you know, I was watching a lot of Tory Lane shit. Man, I was watching. Oh yeah, shit. yeah, the middle. Of the- yeah, I was watching a lot of his shit. <laughs> Boy, shit he was. Weak. He had oh, the quarantine the, radio. The quarantine yeah, radio. Shit. I was just watching Mass. I was watching a lot of the verses battles. Yeah, the verses yeah I was watching battle. a lot of shit popped up. People figured out the how verses. To, the verses was definitely one of the a plus thing that yeah that popped up out of that whole COVID thing. But you know, one thing I re- one thing I regret about COVID is not doing some shit like this. Oh, if we would have started oh, this shit, man. That would have grabbed it because no, you had no choice but to. But then you, you I wanted to, but I. You gonna be able to like have three people, four? That's yeah, four. we couldn't. Have, it would have been like I would have been on that. That's shit. why. That's why I didn't start it. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been wanting to do this shit, but I was like, I don't want to do the whole remote thing, and it gonna look, it's gonna look yeah. bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want, I want to have guests over and shit yeah. and chop it up and. Cause conversation's just better when yeah, motherfuckers in the room and shit. You, you know be what like, saying? what? The, uh, can't your connections? Yeah, yeah niggas is freezing up. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah don't talking. don't look at the Nelly versus boy. That was the dustiest versus I see. Yeah, yeah, the Nelly versus was, wasn't so good. I, somebody had some bad connection in that versus. It was another one with like Teddy Riley or some shit. His shit was real fucked up. Like his internet was fucked up and. I'm I think like, the, oh, you could be rich. I think like the best shit. verses though was that DMX Snoop Dogg shit. That shit was fire. <laughs> nah, the best one. one was fucking uh, Gucci Man and the fucking Jeezy nah, man. I like the, the. You can't deny that one. I like the Fat Joe and Ja Rule. That ain't yeah. Ja Rule. It trash. was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. I mean, it, it brought some good memory when I. Yeah, because Ja Rule got some motherfucking hits. Nah, he got hits. Yeah, that he can't. He got. He <laughs> trash as a person. But the nigga got you helped some him hits. With, you helped him um with the fire joint, right? I ain't I don't know that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know the fire joint? That is wild though. The fire festival. That shit. I saw on Netflix. That shit. That shit said the uh the festival that never happened. Or some shit like I think that was the title. The concert something that never like, happened. Something like that. Yeah, shit, that's a crazy story. You know about the fire festival? No. <laughs> it's a Netflix. It's it was a Netflix documentary. That's how I know about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? It was this dude that got with Ja Rule and. They wanted to have a fucking music festival on uh, Pablo Escobar's. The whole allure of it was it's a music festival like fucking Coachella or something. Yeah, like like Tomorrow World kind of thing. Something like that, but on a on a private island that used to be Pablo Escobar's island, mm-hmm. and they like uh, they mark. It's this one guy. I can't remember what his name I is. I forgot his name too. Joey or some shit. Yeah. I don't fucking know. The, the whitest Bob. name you could, the whitest trust fund baby name you could think about is his name. And he, the marketing plan was was genius, you know, if you got the money to do it. Because how they marketed it in the beginning, they got like supermodels, you know what I'm saying, to, to uh, they flew them out to the island and shot like a promo video and got all of them to like post a, like an orange square on Instagram. And like um, say fire festival whatever year it was and that mm-hmm. got people like the 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 top chicks on Instagram they flew all of them out and got them to post about it and shit and that's what got the buzz started and shit like mm-hmm. that and it was one guy he got all these investors involved and told them that you give me these millions we're gonna start this fucking island festival and we're gonna get this mu- this x amount of money back and we're gonna make it a new thing it's gonna be the new Coachella and shit like that he was good at like selling shit to investors and shit. And he got millions, <clears throat> but what he fucked up was he um he wanted to do it in like four months, and when he got the money, he ain't got nothing. Like he had did nothing. He had set nothing in the motion. He ain't got the contracts for the island. 
Like the dude that owned the island, he didn't even know about the shit. And he, he was trying to rebrand the island. He didn't want it to be called Pablo Escobar's Island. So after he done got all the money, the dude was like, nah, fuck you. You can't use my island because I don't want it branded like that. So we had to find another island to do it on that wasn't as nice. Mm-hmm. They have no infrastructure on, on this plot that he wanted to have it on and shit. Barely had running water and shit. And he was selling... <laughs> Some of the tickets to this shit was like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for like villas and like mm-hmm. yacht parties and they was like some of the biggest acts in the world they was bringing to it and shit. But he was promising, he was over promising and getting all this investment money and fucking trying to do it in way too short of a time span. And the shit just blew up in his face. And Ja Rule was like the face of it, the face of it, you know. <clears throat> and he was like saying all this big shit about it and blah cents blah blah. Got at him. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the end, when they finally had it, like it was no villas. It was only tents. It was supposed to be like catering that they were supposed to pay like six million. They for. got like plate. They had like bologna sandwiches and shit, you know. And it was a tropical storm happened that day. Nobody and, even came to perform, right? Yeah, all the acts backed out at the last minute. They they chartered planes. Like it was it was an island that planes didn't even really fly into. They had to charter planes to get people in. And they were so backed up on like the plan and they didn't even charter planes for people to leave. So people came there with stuck. no food, no barely <laughs> water, sleeping in tents when they supposed to be sleeping in villas on yachts and shit. Wow. And it's like uh, tent city out there and they had no way to get home. And someone paid like 200, 350 for the fucking weekend and shit. Yeah. And duh. fucking, it was in people, and they was posting all on the internet and Twitter and shit, like clowning and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, 50 um, Cent was getting that Ja Rule. It was like, that why would y'all and, buy a ticket from this? And the dude that organized the whole shit, he ended up getting like nine years in prison behind it. He in prison right now for all the fucking fraudulent shit he did behind that shit. It's a crazy documentary on Netflix. It's really good, man. Really good. Yeah. Wow, I'm about to watch that. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> it's a crazy story, man. Because right after he and like he was trying to do it so fast, he like contracted a whole bunch of workers living on the island to like build up all the fucking sets and the tents and everything like that. And he was promising, he was making them work overtime to like meet the deadline. And they didn't said he, he was going to pay him. How did he get the power generators? I think, I don't know. I think yeah, they it had was genera- like they had generator. little inf- it was a little infrastructure on this <laughs> island. One generator out there, boy. But at the end, like he didn't even pay none of the workers and shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And this one lady like yeah, lost yeah. like fifty thousand of her life savings, like because she felt bad about all the workers that didn't get paid. And now the bitch, not, uh, not the bitch, now the woman can't even retire because she gave her life savings away to people that didn't get paid for the. F- he, this shit crazy Bro, And then after that shit went down He did another scam While the FBI Was investigating him But under another dude's name And they caught him on that shit too It's all in the documentary You gotta check it out though But on that note We gonna roll into A few topics Before we get up out of here And before we get into The fucking Jaden and Will shit One more time Cause I do wanna talk about That shit one more time <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, some new developments Unless you want to just go ahead and jump back And jump into that but Yeah we can jump into it Yeah man. let's jump into that What's the new development? I mean it ain't no crazy new development But the one thing I want to be said And I want to <laughs> point out You know before we say anything else about the shit Is the fact That Jada Pinkett To this day Has not came out and said anything in defense Of her husband that slapped a nigga on the Oscar to defend her on her her honor. You know what I'm saying? She can't. The only thing, only statement she done released is on Instagram talking about it's time for some healing. Bitch, you ain't tired of healing niggas and shit. Yeah, Last time healing. you healed a nigga, you had to smack, you had to fuck him. Yeah. And that's what got Will in this boat in the first I, motherfucking place. I heard place. she put out a statement today that saying that she wished that he, uh, Will Smith never smacked Chris Rock. What she what she said that at? I'll show you, boy. You gonna make me look <laughs> dead ass. Look, Nigga, I sit. Which she said yeah, it on man. Instagram or something. Yeah, I'm about to show you right now. It's gotta be fake. It gotta be fake. Nah, you know you gonna see the source. You gonna be like, oh yeah, that's not fake. Cool. If it ain't on, if it ain't on her Instagram, it was on Coolidge. Oh, in her Coolidge. story, I don't believe it. Was it. On Coolidge the kid. I'm on her Instagram right now, <laughs> and the last thing she posted was a was a fucking quote that say. This is a season for healing, and I'm here for it. When Bitch, I, and I'm here if for you don't it. get the fuck out of here, 
<laughs> and defend fucking Will Smith. He getting destroyed out here, man. He's All the comics. Is he getting destroyed? He getting, yeah, destroyed, he's getting destroyed, bro. I, I heard he, he saw this. He saw the thing that did I send you this? Look, you know nothing. he got canceled for Netflix. Uh, Netflix pausing all the movies they had lined yeah. up with him and shit. Even Bad Boys. Did I show you this, bro? They canceling Bad Boys. <laughs> it ain't no Bad Boys without Will Smith. Yeah, you need... You, you I show you this? <laughs> <laughs> Is that... Oh, that's, my God. That's that chick we was talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> That shit is this. Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that shit in there when I edit that shit. Yeah, that shit tears. But y'all feel me though, like yeah, of course, like, like yeah, that just again, you know, it's like you got some people that like was defending her, like when everybody was already because they were already kind of jumping on her. Yeah. And then you know, even I was like, you know, even last week I was like, yeah, but you know, blah blah blah. But the fact that she ain't even say nothing. This is like, like, man, you you made this man. Not only did you embarrass this man, a good man. Yeah, Will Smith. You know, you you embarrass him with the uh, August Alcina thing, but he <sighs> defends you, and he lost his 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 achievement. Something he you know something he did. Yeah, he achieved. You know what I'm saying? He lost that for you. One of the biggest to get the Oscar, bro. One you, of you've the, been waiting on this forever. Forever. This is his first Oscar. Exactly, and. This shining moment. And you didn't even say like, yeah, you know, um, thank you for smacking the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Publicly. So, maybe maybe she said it behind doors, but maybe she didn't. But this nigga did the most public humiliation. It was humiliating, but this nigga sacrificed everything to walk up on that stage at the Oscars and slap Chris Rock. Another pa- legend. Part of me think... Live. <laughs> live. Part of me think that this this has to be some kind of scripted event. I think it's staged. That's... In a few days, they're going to come out and release a video from backstage saying, we finna fool the world. And I don't think this so, is how bro. good of actors we are. You know what I'm saying? Actors, that's what I'm hoping man. because I'm, I'm really heartbroken for Will. Because... It's crazy how one thing can Tarnish. take away every other thing this man has ever done in his life. To this point, he's been pretty much like stainless. I don't think he's done. I don't think that justifies bro, him. Though. They coming for him, bro. They coming for him like they that. They coming for him so hard. All the comedians and and comedians are like one of the loudest voices in like entertainment these days because they it's one of the last. Like genres of entertainment where it's kind of baked into it to where they should be able to say whatever the fuck they want to say and you can't say nothing back to it because it's a joke. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what's so egregious to people right now because whoa, you you not only like said something to a comedian, but you got violent with him. Oh, that's unacceptable because comedians can say whatever. Cause they just joking. It's like coming out it's the radio job. or something. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and you just you just literally <laughs> open a wide door, open door for if you say now nah, you leaving comedian exposed. If they say something crazy, yeah. somebody might walk up to the stage and slap them. That's that what day. they saying. Like he's setting the precedent. Like okay, Will Smith did it's it. Okay. So next time I go to a comedy show, if I don't like the joke, I'm gonna go slap a motherfucker too. But. Will Smith ain't the only, it ain't, he ain't the first motherfucker that, that tried to fight a comedian. You know what I'm saying? I seen a video the other day of fucking a comedian squaring up with a nigga on stage that ran up there and shit. And they like hopping oh, yeah, around, I, pacing I each it. other and shit. Not at the Oscars, though. Not at the Oscars, though. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, Oscars. niggas been running up on comedians, though. It ain't the yeah. thing to do. You know, but, you know, that shit. But I think the world's shocked because it's Will Smith. It's Will Smith. That's what's the world. You know? That's, but they shouldn't cancel him. At the end of the day, nah, it was just a smack. He him. just smacked a nigga. You know. That's what I. He smacked saying. a nigga and walked off. And niggas get smacked every day. Bitch. Niggas get smacked every day. <laughs> Bitches lose their hair. Bitches go bald every day. B. Yeah. Like. But it was <laughs> wild though. It was one of the wildest. <laughs> I'm bald. <laughs> That's what. That's why. Like, I. That's a hill I can stand on. Cause, bitch, Jada, I'm bald. You know, 
It took me a while to come to terms with it. You know, I wore hats for a long time. Every time I stepped outside, you know. But now I'm cool with the bald head. And this nigga would have joked at me back then. I wouldn't expect nobody to fucking slap nobody on my behalf, you know. But I don't know. It's just crazy. I just, I feel for Will because it's looking real bad for his career. Like, he he, he said today that he fucking checking himself into rehab over this. Oh, he, really? He's going to rehab? Nigga, he resigned from the fucking uh um the Oscar shit, the the film academy, blah blah blah. He resigned. Bro, if something were to happen to Will Smith, the world will hate Jada Pickett Smith. The world already hates like, Jada. Like they, they hate <laughs> they hate her now, but they will hate her. Yeah. She won't get any like play from nothing. Like, I don't she got some pretty either. radical fans though. She got some pretty radical really? fans. Really? That's that's one of them them toxic relationship that Could you, you imagine like, you know, God forbid, like you pop up like Will Smith commits suicide or something. Oh shit. my God. Don't even speak that into yeah, no, the universe. No, 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 said, you But know, I'm I I understand what you're saying though, but like Yeah, yeah. Cause apparently like if that shit wasn't staged, and I don't really believe it's staged, but like what the fuck Will got to be going through in his head? To walk up on stage and do that, but, man. But my thing is, okay, when I went when I looked at the clip, he was laughing. Right after but before? Before. Yeah, he laughed. But Jada, she wasn't yeah, laughing. She, she rolled her eyes. Yeah, but but it, it, she was laughing before all that. There's a video surfing that she was laughing, you know, yada yada and then before the joke though. Yeah, and then after the joke, she got serious. Yeah, yeah. because the joke was about her bald head. Yeah, but yeah. then, but then it's like, I don't know, like, I don't know. To me, it it, it just feels fake. It, it don't feel right. It's it is a because few. It, the, <laughs> like how he switch. Like the the second part of it, like when he sat down. You know, and keep said, my name, my wife's name, yeah, out yeah, the fucking that mouth. That part look real, but yeah. everything. To that point, and after he walked away, to me, it's just... Yeah, it looked like his, a bit, right? No, nah, no, nah, his attitude when he walked away, oh, yeah. his attitude when he walked away to me looked like, like, yeah. But he guy. laughed even when he was turning, he yeah. still had a smile on his face. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying though, but it looked like, it looked like one of the smiles that was like, but yeah, yeah I just, like, I, yeah, I just yeah, smacked bitch, nigga. you. Because even when he was like, keep my mom's fuck name out your mouth, he was like, it's a G.I. Jake dude, and he said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he did. He did you know? like that. He was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." I think it was like that look on his face wasn't like on no. It it was like on some smile and shit, but it was like, "Yeah, nigga, I just smacked shit out of you on stage at the Oscars." <laughs> That's what it looked like. It is. I don't think it looked really. Like, it's one of the hardest slaps of all time, though. Like, cause uh, my my thing is this: what would what would Will Smith gain from that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's how I know it gotta Jada, be real. You Jada, know? in so. these past few days, but the Oscar needed more ratings though. But they wouldn't throw Will they under the throw bus. Will under the bus, man. Unless, unless yeah. he had like insurmountable proof after the fact that it was staged. Unless they get a nigga bag, to, I, do I don't think it's the amount of money. He rich enough, you know what I'm saying? Man, he would have to be because you know he like bro, that's some fire, you know he like a content like, creator yeah, now you know he show like his whole life and he got all the fucking all right. effect videos on Instagram and shit like that like what if this is a whole fucking TikTok waiting to happen he gonna show like the behind the scenes of how they planned out the slap teach them a what lesson us a lesson or something maybe he trying to teach people a lesson on cancel culture and shit. That should be hard as fuck. That would be hard. I'll be like, yo, oh. I knew it, Will. <laughs> that bitch Jada got a bald head still, bro. What you doing? You know, yeah, I'm just playing, Jada. I'm just playing. That, yeah, that, um, would that, that would be the only yeah. thing that would save him at this point because they coming for that nigga neck, nigga. I haven't really, like, capped in. Like, if they I, be, really, I, tap, like, I know you be sending me shit. But all like, the comedians going after him, like, call, like going after you, him and making egregious jokes about Jada at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't even know Chris Rock had a brother that's comedian, and he's fucking going off about it's, it. He got two brothers yeah. that's going off. But I didn't on. know they were comedians. I ain't know that either. I mean, I seen them before, but I didn't even know they're they was comedian. his brothers. They're on tour right now. Apparently, he got like nine brothers or some but shit. But I don't understand how people could be going so hard at Will Smith, knowing who Will Smith is and understanding like that nigga's probably going through some. Granted, I know he made. Like, this is the thing. I'm not making an excuse mm. for what he did, 
But I'm just saying, I am kind of making an excuse for what he did. Yeah. Like, you, we understand. It's a toxic relationship. It's a man. toxic relationship. It's a bomb. So it's how a can you taking bomb? Like, why doesn't you? Know, why don't people reach out <laughs> instead of like, you know, canceling him? Just being like, damn. But that's Jay. the time we live in, man. Like, you do like what? What will? Not that it's a mistake, but the mistake he made was like he's his image is so pristine. Like, if he was a nigga that that was known for doing wild shit, like a Kanye or some shit, like. <laughs> Like when Kanye ran up on stage and did the whole Taylor Swift yeah, Beyonce yeah. video thing, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? People was, it was wild at the time, but they was like, people still like, oh, it's Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kanye do shit like that, you yeah, know? Yeah. But Will, he never did nothing remotely like this. So it's such a fucking role switch. My my question is. Yeah, but he smacked it. He just like tapped the nigga for like kissing him or some shit. But my question is, okay, he did that to uh, Chris Rock. Well, you think he would have done that to Kevin Hart? We talked about that in the last. I think he would have did it to Kevin Hart. I think he would have smacked shit out of Kevin Hart. He would have, he would have know, smacked Kevin even harder because he's a little short nigga. But Kevin Hart is fit as hell. You probably probably would have punted that nigga. Kevin but he Hart is, is fit as hell. So is Will Smith. So is Will Smith. And he yeah, like, but not like He's like two Hart. inches tall, two feet yeah, he taller, is taller than him. him. He could have punted that all nigga. Right, what about like somebody like Steve Harvey? I think he would have too much respect. Yeah, maybe... I think he would slap Steve Harvey too. Nah, Steve I think I think I think I think at Steve Harvey he wouldn't smack him. Like he, slapped he, he would respect Chris Rock. Yeah, but Chris Rock and him they like the same age. It was on the show. Dave Chappelle. What about Dave Chappelle? Dave Chappelle nah, would have beat that <laughs> up. Dave Chappelle would have been ready for that shit. And he would have had that cigarette. Yo, Dave Chappelle. He was like, "Will Tyrone, what the fuck you doing, Will? What the fuck?" Nah, yeah. <laughs> get back. I, I get think, back, Will. I think, I think uh, a Dave Chappelle would have like. Would have be his ass though. Like would have fought. Like would have fought. Yeah, he wouldn't even let. He wouldn't have let him real. get that close like that. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't even. He, I think he would have seen. He a perceptive motherfucker. He would have seen that shit coming. But like, like I said, Chris, he got like uh, Asperger's syndrome, and I'm not, I'm not saying it to be funny, but he has, uh, like the the form of his like uh, he's on the spectrum. You know, the form of his when you're on the spectrum, what is called like. Um, autism. Autism. His form of autism is he's like he don't pick up on like social cues and body language mm. as fast as everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he didn't see the slap coming at all. But he did say, "Uh oh." But he uh, said, "Uh oh," to be funny when 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 Will first jumped on the stage because he he thought Will was finna come up there and do do a funny bit with him or some shit yeah. like off the cuff. <laughs> He didn't. He never in a hundred in a million years, just like us. We ne- I never expected a slap to happen the first time I watched the video. The mo- a movie slap at that. That's another thing about it. Like he it didn't. Like he didn't slap. smack that nigga like like a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like he. It was kind of a like Draw a choreographed. Back. Yeah. And he like, like held his. He didn't like follow through like. Bitch, you know, yeah. he like <laughs> he he came like this. It's like a he pulled it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe he thought about it. Like maybe yeah. he thought about it at the last moment. Maybe that's what he was laughing it's about. Like, he, what if he went, <laughs> <laughs> bro? What that, if Chris ducked that shit and like they fought and Will was like chasing that nigga around the stage? Like the shit could have been even I'm wilder. Sad. I'm sad that they they they, they doing what they doing to. Will. Yeah, man, they tore the great. I, I really, I really, <laughs> legitly. Like you feel me, I'm a Will Smith fan. Yeah, I've been a Will, you know but saying? I've been d- disappointed in him for the last few years because of Jada and shit. Like I lost some respect for him. I wouldn't lose respect for. Him. I don't. As a man, you know, I don't think so, bro. Because like, yeah, but we all go through. You know, not everybody's built like us. Uh, like you know, built like what? But it's Will Smith, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's Mike Lowry. Yeah, but it's it's <laughs> it's fucking. <laughs> Hitch, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking the nigga from Pursuit of Happiness. It's it's Hancock. It's it's the nigga that that helped save the world on Independence Day. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but it's an action still- hero. You know, like this nigga. And come to find out, R&B singers is fucking this nigga wife. Yeah, but you know when you love when you love when you love your wife. You know what I'm saying? This you know it's also room for forgiveness, bro. You know what I mean? We don't know if he forget. I mean, Not for me, bro. Yeah, of course. Not for me either. No, nah, like, you know? that shit happened. Yeah, but I'm saying though, like you know, some people, and I don't knock those people who are able to stay strong. And but I, I, I could have sworn at one point they had an open relationship. Anyway, they did. That's what I'm saying. So well, the story is they, 
they separated for a while and chose t- to independently seek happiness happiness on a on a that, individual I, behalf. I know? heard some rumors that some Mark Anthony and some stuff was going on before, maybe a, a while back too. So I, I, I who I, really knows but those two people? But it's always been rumors I just know about that Jada them. just wanted to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that shit again the other day. <laughs> and and the the craziest thing that jumped out to me when I rewatched it, not the whole thing, but I watched another clip, is um Will was like he was like, cause you know he was sitting across from her looking crazy, and he was like, yeah, I feel like uh, the husband that's at the press conference with his wife, you know, like I love my baby and I do anything for her and. She up here telling the world about her transgressions and shit. And then Jada said, <laughs> what I know cut through this nigga's soul. Because he was, she was, they was referring to her fucking uh, August Alcina. She was like, uh, I don't really feel like it was a transgression. Damn. Like, yeah, I no. feel like I did nothing wrong. I just wanted to feel good. What? You don't even look at it like it was a bad thing, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like... That was just the thing to do at the time? And you feel re- refreshed and I anew would. from it? Like, get the fuck out of here, Will. Like, like, like I'm not going to lie. Motherfuckers be, motherfuckers be shooting their wives for shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They be killing their wives. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, I it's, it's wild, it's man. Wild. But I just hope Will don't lose his whole, like, livelihood behind that shit. Because people is... Like Netflix about to cancel him. Yeah, because we 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 there's a lot of people that look to Will Smith like a, a role model. Definitely, you know, yeah. I used to watch his, uh, you know, his TikToks and his IG and all this stuff, and how he goes to these foreign countries and have a blast with people, and how receptive the people when he they just see him living the life. Man. I think I think too though, it's like the main main. Big thing about it again, you know. I know we talked about this, but he, he it's also who he smacked. He smacked Chris Rock, and Chris Rock is very well respected also in the industry. Yeah. And I think also, I think if Chris Rock would have acted out bad too, it would be like both. They would just it wouldn't be. But it was the fact that also that Chris Rock stayed professional. Yeah, you know, he didn't. You know, he he he. His I heard, also heard his comments after he was kind of like, no, nah, don't worry about it. Like, let's keep the I'm show still going. process. Yeah, man, like blah, blah. I think that's like you me at the end of the day. I also like Chris Rock too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so I don't know, man. But just, Chris Rock is not Will Smith though. He 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 big in his res- big. In, his, in a different respect as like a stand up comedian and. One of the he's not greatest. a biggest he's not a bigger biggest bigger movie star than Will Smith. I, I wouldn't think. say he's a bigger movie star, but he. Chris but as Rock a personality, they pretty they pretty link yeah. they pretty on the same level. I, I would shit. say Will Smith's obviously a little above, yes. But I yeah, think, I would say he's shining a little. He was shining a little bit brighter than Chris mm-hmm. Rock because like Chris Rock, like he's solidified in what he's doing and who he is. But like it's not like. People always checking for Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? Like now, I, I just found out that nigga was doing the voices in Madagascar and all that shit, and that's where most uh, of his uh, fucking money is I coming knew from. I knew that. I mean, I knew it, but it wasn't like, oh, Chris. But what Rock. about all the movies he had <laughs> acted in with Adam Sandler and stuff like that? Those movies, but he all always like a backup character and shit. No. Like he like a part of a crew, but he ain't never had no like crazy standalone movie or nothing like yeah, that. Most of the movies, he just, he just came out with the one movie the other, uh, last year with the um the horror movie he produced. Was he, he pro- in it? Yes, he's the cop. He acts as, as a detective. It was a very, it was like what's a, the name of it? It was like a saw type movie. What's the name? Um, of it? I forgot. Shit, I forgot. The That's name. my point. No, no, no. He nah. he doing shit, but he ain't like he ain't got a fucking Independence Day. He ain't got a he, course, he, he ain't got a fucking pursuit of but, happiness. Okay, but I'm saying like, of course, movie wise, no, because he's he's not really like a movie person. But like, but again, he got movie. He be trying on that stand up on the stand. I'm talking about on the stand up comedy yeah, that's, side. Yeah, that's my he's point. definitely, yeah, I me. Mean, yeah, yeah he that. definitely he's fucking one of, he's, huge, and he's loved, and he's obviously well connected because he hosting the Grammys. And, I mean, the Oscars and of shit. Course. You know, like people love Chris Rock. You know, but I mean, he had a TV show too. You know, he had what a mean? lot. He done a lot of shit. You know, like, like everybody, brothers, hate, everybody his, hates Chris. It was very good, did definitely, very well, definitely. You know, 
And that went on for a while. A while yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He definitely solidified, you know what I'm saying? And then he had the one movie with all the comedians, with Bernie Mac and all them. Uh, he's on the front cover. He's, yeah, it's called, yeah, yeah. but he was, he was maybe kind of fading, though. And Will still, like, was pumping shit out. Of like, course. Will Smith's still in the movies. But, me. And, like, to my point, fucking Chris, like, before they slap, Chris Rock, he was on tour and his tickets was supposedly, like, $6. After the slap, they 650, 600 something, and he's selling out like that too. So, Will, he really got <laughs> smacked back into a fucking successful career. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. Like, yeah. his his name ain't been buzzing like this in a long motherfucking time. Yeah, but he time. also don't, he also kind of retired from that shit. He don't really, he doesn't really do stand up comedy like that. Yeah, no he had, he he's, started doing stand up again after his, after his divorce. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He stopped doing it for. He stopped well, I doing a lot of nigga was standing up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, shit. He started doing a lot of shit after his divorce because when he was married in a bad bad marriage and shit, he wasn't really doing stand up like that no more. And he wanted to get back into it after. Mm. You know how it is when you get out of a relationship, shit. You want to jump back in the shit you was doing mm. before you got bogged down and shit. Yeah. Yes. Not not to say marriage is. Can hinder you. It can help you in a lot of ways too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you with the <laughs> right most, woman. You most, know, most of the yeah, girls once they break up, they go back to the gym, and all of a sudden they want to be looking fit, and doing Same the squats. Got, yeah, with the, the squat, squat booty machine. on Instagram, <laughs> mm -hmm. poking that ass out. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah, Poor but word, I hope, man, man y'all give Will some grace, man. Yeah, man. word, man, because he definitely like man. He, he don't we're deserve. human, man. We're we're we're. We're making mistakes, man. Regardless of faith, you're yeah. not making a mistake, then you're not a human. But Word, in this man. climate, in Will's position, you can't, you can't like make I no fucking smack a motherfucker sometimes. Yeah. Like, you that, know what I mean? That's deep, these people. He ain't the first motherfucker that got smacked, but in Will's position at the the Oscars and all that, like in this climate in today, you can't just do that, man. Because they canceling niggas left and right out here, man. I, they they canceled Donald Trump. Like, the, Donald Trump can't even be on the motherfucking internet. That's the, like, and that's another that's thing. Crazy. Like, he was the president of the motherfucking United States. I just feel like I also feel like you know, Will, knowing his personality, and I think what Will Smith does clearly, and what he does and what he says is genuine. And he's already went on there. I'm sure he feels they didn't even take have to take the Oscar from him. He resigned. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't he, give back the Oscar though. He just resigned from being on the committee or something. Oh, shit. he didn't give back the Oscar. No, nah, they ain't made. They still debating on whether he won. Oh, he gonna keep that shit. He probably yeah. Like, he hey, ain't just he ain't forfeited I, I the won, Oscar. Nigga. But, but like, bro, how they going to really, like, they have a part, right? And then Will Smith fits the description. There's no way that they could be like, that nigga smacked Chris Rock, man. You ain't going to put him in it. Like, At this Will point, Smith. they definitely doing that. That's because whack. movies that he already in or can't, or are pausing productions. That's corny. But what I think they doing, what they hoping going to happen, because... It seems like the best thing you can do when like controversy comes it's like around, like sanctions or something. <laughs> yeah, but the best thing you can do when like shit like this pop up or any celebrity get into some situation like this that tarnishes their name, whether it's a usually it's a fucking sexual thing where they got they got fucking accused of fucking rape or yeah. sexual harassment or some shit, or they said something racist or something like Joe Rogan or something. The best thing to do is just ignore it. Cool off for a little while, wait till some more crazy shit happen in the media, cause crazy shit happen all the time, and then ease your way. That's what he's gonna have to do. He got to go away for a or while. Or do a table talk. I think that's the worst <laughs> shit. Yeah. If he do a fucking table talk, that shit gonna spread again. I would be like, you know, <laughs> nah, just a table talk accepting like, you know, and telling the truth of why you did it. You People know? gonna meme the fuck out of that shit. Will stay the fuck off table talk, nigga. That's the worst thing he could do is get back Jada on that with Jada. Like, oh, you gonna get on that table? Talk. <laughs> you gonna get on that shit? She gonna make that nigga look so crazy. He need to go to rehab, take some time off, and then come back. You know what I'm saying? That's the best thing he could do. But get, will get, do not get on that motherfucking what, table. What is he rehabbing about? Probably you for smacking Chris Rock, <laughs> <laughs> anger <laughs> management or something, or whatever he fucking holding in. Because I read his book and I said on the last podcast like. Throughout his whole life, he felt like a coward because he didn't protect his mom from his dad that, that was abusive and shit like that. All he used to do was just make jokes and laugh and try to make the mood lighter and shit, try to defuse the situation by performing. 
And that's how he became the person he is today. And he felt like a fraud and a and a fake his whole life. Like he was playing to this role of this pristine guy that doesn't doesn't cuss and you know what I'm saying? It's you know, just everything about him is like ideal and shit. You know, he he break the whole shit down in the book and say how he was even thinking about killing his dad at the at the last point of his life. He was like pushing his wheelchair like past some stairs he was thinking about like dumping his dad out on the stairs and killing him for what he did to his mom and shit Damn. and he been holding that shit in and, you know with the whole jada shit how she been embarrassing him and blah 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 and you know he just he obviously blew up and couldn't take it no more i think that's what i would like out to, and slapped the smack the nigga i think that's what i would like to hear out of that situation or if he could talk mm-hmm. i would i would want to know his true feelings about what is going on because i think that whole table talk shit like you can clearly see he was hurt but you was getting the fakeness behind it so maybe if he went out there and he just told the truth like look man that shit that bitch did fuck me up you know that would saying? be raw as hell that would be, i now, would love know? that shit but he'll never do that shit yeah he would never do it he'll never do it but anyways off off, off will yeah you know off will bless blessings to him though, blessings man. to him but they finna come for your neck bro so <laughs> Protect your neck But anyway <laughs> One more One more topic Then we're gonna get the fuck up Out of here We're gonna go back to the uh, LBGT Community For uh-uh. <laughs> uh, So it's this It's it's a bill That just got passed I don't know What state Maybe Florida Or Texas mm. I ain't read up too much On this shit But They call it The don't say Gay bill Y'all heard about that shit? <laughs> Hell no. I'm not even tuning in. I don't it sound wild. Like it that. sound wild, right? Don't say gay bill. Right? Yes. But really it's like a parental it's it's another like better name for it. It's the actual name for it. Mm-hmm. But they like the people who oppose it are calling it the don't say gay bill. And they like it's it's about like um uh, saying and discussing it's pretty much about um Kids from kindergarten to third grade, teachers can't um, discuss their sex lives with them. They can't discuss being gay or or transgender. They can't oh, I'm push. For that. I'm for that. They can't push their gender ideals. Yeah, on I'm them. for that. I'm totally I'm for, for that. that because you know why? <clears throat> you can't do that. You can't say no to that, but then say no to like pushing about religion and shit like that because that's the same thing. Like just views and you know, yeah, those views. You're not allowed to talk about religion and shit in 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 schools and public schools and like that. Then. Because of the same reasons, people are like, "Well, I don't want you to influence my Muslim kid to Christianity or something." Like that. Same way I feel. Look, I ain't. You know what I'm saying? I ain't. I ain't got no problems with you know with that. <laughs> yeah. But I also want you infringing that onto my child. Like you know exactly. What I'm saying? Yeah, but to what what age? Um, I think it shouldn't be in school at all. But, yeah, me. Yeah. But the bill specifically says from like kindergarten to third grade, you can't. It's not enough. It's, it's not definitely enough. definitely not enough, that, but that, it's people pushing back. Even Disney, um, all they workers like staging walkouts and shit because of the bill. Because I think it's happening in, in like Florida or something. It's Florida, and people at Disney World are like walking out because they're mad they, over the bill. They mad because they like I we, don't, and that's people should thing, be able to tell to look, talk to kids about this. That's that's the, one thing I just don't get <clears throat> about this. Like I have no fucking issue with these with. I don't want to see these people, but <laughs> with, with, you know, gay people or anything, I swear on, on to, for God, like, yeah. I don't got no problem. But, bro, why do they got a problem of with us not wanting that pushed on, you know, the kids, on the child? Kids. As a parent, I want to protect my child from what the things that I think is wrong also. You know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just being real. It's not like I want to <laughs> say being gay it's not the norm, you know what I'm saying? Like we were created. Why is it not the norm? Well, because I'm about to get to that. We we were created with like human beings, not even just human beings, like animals. It's a it's a being with a dick and a being with a fucking pussy. Mm-hmm. They fit in each other, and you fuck and the, the, and you skate and the, and you and you catch, 
and a baby is born. Mm -hmm. That's natural. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when you're just rubbing clits together, uh, fucking around, <laughs> fucking around on the dude's side, you can't but, have a wait. you can't have a baby. You know what? what I'm saying? And when you get to the transgender side, like if if you're a Christian or you have any religion or if you believe in any being that made us, especially but especially if you're a Christian, you believe in God and Jesus and everything like that. You saying that God made a mistake off your career. and put you in the wrong body? And you, as a as a human, gonna decide to just go cut your shit off? Yeah, because there are and Christian, mutilated. there are Christian transgenders too. But that's an oxymoron to me. Yeah, of course, that's what I'm saying too. As like, far as the kids, though, you know, like that community acts like like they're the whole thing when they pushing stuff like this is like they want to be for they want kids. That already identify as gay or in that community to see themselves in the same way that black kid, like black parents, would want their daughter to see themselves in a Cinderella movie by having a black Cinderella, or you know, like okay, yeah, I they they want to be equal. They want to be seen. They want to be represented. You know what I'm saying? So. People who are that way because they believe that people are born that way. Mm -hmm. When they pushing for shit like this, <clears throat> they just want to be represented like any other group. You know what I'm saying? But they don't. They they completely dismiss the fact that like television and movies and entertainment is programming. You know what I'm saying? And that lifestyle, <clears throat> if it's introduced at too much of a young age, especially in a developmental age. Yes. It can confuse a child of and course. not give them the opportunity to live the normal lifestyle, or to make, or to make the cho have a choice, to have a choice. or to have a choice because yeah. they get indoctrinated, indoctrinated in that in that stage where they just absorbing. They a sponge and they of absorbing course. everything. They don't even like a kid at that age, especially from kindergarten to third grade. Like they're not thinking about sex and like. Am I gay? Am I straight? Do I like this? Like, they're not thinking about nothing sexual. Like, them hormones ain't even kicked in in them yet. Mm -hmm. And they just figuring out the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And they need people giving them, like, steering them on the right, the right path. And not, like, teachers, like these teachers on TikTok who, uh, like, announce their fucking uh sexual orient thing, sexual yeah. orientation to their class like it's a nah, like it's rough. a celebration and have like gay like rainbow flags in their class and this is one teacher on TikTok she was like she made people she made her her like second grade class because they can't have the American flag in the classroom, she make them pledge allegiance to the gay to the gay nah, pride so flag. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that's some America uh, shit. They can't be doing uh, shit like that out here. Uh, I gotta be on some America shit Cause this is America man. Yeah it's wild. America You know it's America She got fired eventually Because people started They yeah. found They doxed her And found out where yeah, she worked And where like, she lived And shit Which I think she got fired Rightfully she so should. Cause the teacher Is supposed to be teaching Fucking math Reading Science Whatever the fuck The fundamentals The kids need to know When they get out In the real world And not projecting Their Sorry to say Sexual perversions On them Like yeah. what the fuck in any other circumstance, why would a grown up who's supposed to be teaching somebody be sharing who they sleep with? You know what I'm saying? That's always yeah. that's already some perverted shit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, of course. I don't get what the outrage is. Make a little soldiers and shit. That's gonna be some just people like say that's the thing. Like <laughs> they they funny. can't reproduce, so they gotta indoctrinate. You know what I'm saying? To keep. Their community going, they gotta yeah. I mean, I, program it into into kids and I shit. I don't know, man. It, it's like it's like with me, bro. Again, like it's like I totally like I'm again I'm cool. Like I totally am okay with whatever, bro. But it's like, bro, y'all like be who you are quietly. Just like I'm, I'm not out here like, hey guys, I'm straight. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, exactly. You know, like if you if you gay, you know, transgender, like. Why do you have to be like voice that shit so like 
like you get I, I mean I don't know so much about you know everything like the bills and things they're trying to stop or pass but I mean if things aren't like right you know like you know humanly right you're yeah. getting mistreated okay I understand that but like doing all the other shit like hey uh Disney World I'm a I'm a, Disney World we going we need somebody to rep Bro, then I don't know. Somebody in the LBGT community become big and have your own network and put that shit on network. So then people. That's another thing. Uh, it's a video that came out of like this this uh, lady that worked her way up into like the higher uh, echelons of of Disney that run shit in Disney, right? Mm -hmm. And she in the interview she's saying that she got she got two LGBT. LGBTQ kids, um, and she want them to be represented in the programming in Disney from now on. And she was like, uh, if she had her way, and what they working on is to make fifty percent of the care of Disney characters in the future be some form of LGBTQ. Yeah, and that's what that's what I'm saying. Like for like, kids, it's, it's like I get what they're trying to do. Like, I get it. Like, I totally understand. Like, you know, I get what they trying to do, bro. But it's just like, I don't know, bro. I don't, it's like a not, it's like a, you can't win with that shit. Because I, I get, like, they need, their, they, 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 I agree with the rights and stuff like that. I totally get it. I get what they trying to do. Yeah. They're different. They feel as though, but at the same time, like, it's because I'm not like that, bro. I'm just kind of like, nah, like, because I also know exactly what you, ex you know, you how you did the whole breakdown about how kids and how they think and mm -hmm. programming. It's kind of like, I know that as a parent, bro. And I, and I, now what, if would I be, you know, ultimately if my, if my child were to grow up normal without all this, this influence and, and were to be, come to it, you and be like, I'm okay with that. I would still be, I would be okay with that. Like I'm, yeah. I'm good with that. Like, because then I know it's it's ultimately their choice. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't get fooled into that. They didn't get fooled into that. It's into not that, that I wouldn't shit. want my kid. It's not like I would be like, oh, I'd be mad if my child came up to me and told me he was gay, want to be a transgender, whatever. I, 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 to, again, I'm not against It would definitely be an adjustment, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I would, you know, I'd be kind of shocked, but I'm not, I'm not going to be like, what the fuck was wrong yeah. with you? Like, it's just the fact that why are you trying to push that shit? You live in the same world that we live in, bro. Like, you know, just as much as I know, science, you can't change science, bro. Like, you can't change the things that are the norm. It's exactly hard to tell said. them that. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to change the motherfucking norm and make that shit normal. But that's being pushed everywhere. Like, even in the music. Like, most of the stuff is being pushed through the music. Like, with just a, for example, I had, to, Nas X. I had to tell my son, I don't want you listening to Little Nas X. Wow, you told him that. What, what was the what was that conversation like? No, I just like uh, I just pretty much told him like, bro, I, I I don't think it's good for you to be listening to this because he's he's just pretty much not a good role model at this point. You absolutely right, but I mean, you, I, with the shower scene, I was just like, I mean, I didn't watch the whole thing, the it's music like video, that, yeah, the music the video, naked, I ain't tapping with I, the naked prisoners. I heard about it. I, yeah. I literally like somebody shared it, and, and then they started, and I was like, oh. Because I didn't know the whole reason behind the the the, the old town road. Yeah, and I didn't know like what the meaning behind was. It you yeah, know yeah, we yeah. used to sing that shit in the club. I didn't know it at first either. Uh, what like, is it? I don't he's know. He's singing to a gay dude. Like his whole it, the song is about like ride till I can't no more. Like he said uh, that this, <laughs> the whole song is about being gay and fucking the dude and shit. I didn't know that. That's I the don't, old I town don't road. Tap, I don't tap in a little not. Once I heard, like, again, I ain't got nothing against gay people. I got nothing against But you, can, it, you, like, uh, you ain't was, never saw, you ain't never, no. you ain't like that song? I don't listen to that and I'll stay away from it. Even that before, shit. even before, he, when that Bro, shit we, came we, out, didn't nobody know it. he was gay though. I mean, yeah. I heard the song. Of course, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie, but I, I don't know. Like, I see sometimes on social media, like, shit that he said. And I'm just like, just, you know, on my opinion, no offense. Like, I'd be like, this nigga, this nigga gay. I'll be like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> like, I'll be like, oh, no. Oh, nah. I gotta get off. I gotta get off. I gotta get off. You know, I scroll. Like, yeah, I exactly. But I heard about this. The but the thing is, again, it's like what you said. 
I have nothing against gay people. It's the ones that are just like out. It's just like you're too out there, bro. It's like, okay, bro, we know you're gay. All right, just yeah. live normal, bro. Exactly. Like, be normal. Not doing all the shower scenes. <laughs> the shower scenes, bro. Like, bro. It's another, he had another egregious video, too, where I, he was like, uh... Huh? Oh yeah, the baby. He, the baby what's thing. The deal with the oh baby? yeah, I did yeah. see that. See, like the and, baby and shit like thing. that. How was that? Was that like? I, I, like it was, it that, was like Photoshop bro, bro, and makeup like, or like, something. It's like I'm looking at my phone and like I'm just like scroll, dude. I'm like, what is this, bro? Like you know, he had the video. Scroll he, had, he had the video where he was uh <laughs> he was um in like. The Garden of Eden that ended in hell, and he he either gave the devil a lap dance or fucked the devil yeah, by the end yeah, of the yeah, other yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah niggas, be this, this is all satanic, and that goes. And into he the, put he put out the fucking the shoes with a drop of his blood in it and shit. Yeah, called yes. him like the six 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 shoe or something. But see, yeah. this goes into the music industry and the the Illuminati. Wow, stuff man, yep, he gonna this. be right there giving giving mm-hmm. lap dances. To, to you and, know who and, and it's a big it's a big amount it's for a, eternity it's a it's a big amount of kids <laughs> that's looking up to this this dude and like emulating everything that he doing and like they gay because because he gay you know what i'm saying uh, yeah, like people people like, try to act like not that yeah yeah no, go ahead, people go ahead. try to act like like kids don't need to be molded and can't be easily influenced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like easy, even even as adults, we are <coughs> subconsciously influenced all the motherfucking time. From that's that's why the commercial exists. That's why the product placement in show in shows exist because they implanting shit into your yeah. Subconscious in your psyche, and when you see that motherfucking Big Mac on fucking on on the commercial. Shit, you drive by that bitch, you might be like, hmm. I want to get a Big Mac. I fuck with that Big Mac today. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. You, you know, know what I'm saying? It's like when you watching Lil Nas X, and niggas probably like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like I might, think I might fuck around with this guy today. If you young and impressionable enough, yeah. and you ain't you ain't already set in who you are, but you just think yeah, you it. could we, be like now that. Now that Look. we on this subject, right? Fortnite, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Let's talk about Fortnite. Guess who Fortnite had to do a live concert? Lil Nas X, they did. Oh, yes. I need. I know they did it like with Travis Scott. They I know did, they did it with before Travis Scott. Really, it, it was Lil Nas X. Yeah, and that's my thing. I mean, he bro, probably was on that bitch in booty shorts this, and this all a, type this of shit. Another, this is another. This is a good example, especially during you know during the time period we all older. Remember when Nicki Minaj came out? Everybody wanted. All the girls wanted to be oh, lesbians. Yeah, all of them. I don't know if you remember that during that time period when she was always rapping like I, you know, she's like. Talking about being a lesbian yeah. and shit like that. Cause it was like a part of her marketing too. It was? Said, Hell yeah, bro. She was a lesbian at one point or she was just talking like she was talking right. like she was one, but it don't matter. Everybody, you know, that was the thing. And, and, and when at least when I was cool, all the every, Nicki Minaj was like, you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, yeah. you know, like everybody wanted big ass. All the bitches wanted big asses, and, and shit. And it too. was like the it was like the thing, you know. It's like it's like the trend. It's cool. Like in teens, it's like. Damn, Lil Nas X smacking dudes' asses. Let me smack another dude's ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's a cool thing. In. Yeah, like, it's just culture, man. But, culture influences, like, everything about everybody. That's why, like, like people think... That's what I'm saying. Like, humans are so fucking gone. narcissistic. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want to think they, they're, <laughs> they're born something... And they been that since they came out to Coochie. But that's not the fucking, that's not the case. Like, in my opinion, we are born as blank slates. You know what I'm saying? And you're influenced by everything that you experience and the decisions you make when, like, certain shit happen in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, okay, you you pushing back on that one? Yeah, I I, I think at at some people, not everybody. At, at some point, you could start because I, when I was growing up, I noticed something that as as a kid, and I, my uncle had a child. Okay. And at a very young age, I started noticing how he was standing, how he was like expressing himself. He already looked at me. As he had a kid. the the man, the, the womanly mannerisms. Yeah, and shit. the women. Yeah, but you still got that influence to know that from somewhere. 
Yeah, he had to get it yeah, from but, somewhere. But, yeah, of course. It's, it's probably because you know he was living with his mom. But I'm yeah. also, I'm, but I'm, I'm also saying like, even your thought process, you were influenced to know that mm-hmm. some ain't right, some ain't right, something ain't right, some and some type of influence in your life too. Because like, again, you are, you know, you don't come out your, you know, as soon as you come out, you know, got the biblical cord. You know, you look at your mom, you're like, why am I a boy? Yeah. You, know, you don't come out like and that. And if you're straight, you don't come out like, what a pussy. Yeah. Uh, you, if you gay, you don't come out like, what a dick's at. You know, like, yeah, exactly. you ain't shit. You All you yeah, thinking about when you come out, like, my wife, we just had a, had a, a beautiful baby girl. I meant to say that in the beginning. But mm-hmm. yeah, Haley congrats is, too, by the way. Congrats, appreciate congrats. it. Haley is in the world. Haley made Griffin. So then you got the, you got the couple now. You know, the, the, yeah, boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. And we so. done. You're done right Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Vasectomy time Yeah done. But the only instinct That you come out with Is re- You ready to suck on that titty You know She came out like <laughs> Like where that, where that titty at You know Where that nipple yeah. You know Yeah exactly And that's like As far as like She can't walk She can't talk She can barely look around She can't She can barely move a, Like Humans come out so Like fragile you know what I'm saying? You don't come out with some predetermined destiny and shit. You know I what I'm do, saying? I do believe that you can manipulate and I do you could influence. That's what that's my point. Yes. You can influence and mold somebody into but anything. But not everybody. I, I still believe that some people come out. Some people just like just this like they they're they're trapped in a male's body, but it's actually a female. Like I still think it's I think, hard for me to believe I that think their man. influence. I same way a person turns, you know, becomes, you know, gay. I feel like they is some type of interest at a very, very young age. Something happens. Something happens because it just wouldn't. It just it. it you can't. We don't even understand. We don't even understand everything about the normal people. There is no fucking way that they can prove in, or even know, you know. Yeah, when they, you know, at some point I just felt as though I'm like, I think I saw a video like the youngest person was probably around like seven, eight. Uh-huh. But at that age, just like in the, in you know, I'm not trying to get all religion on you, but even in that age, in the Bible and shit like that, the age of age of reasoning is seven. And the reason why the age of reasoning is seven is because that's where they say where, you know, kids can, you know. They, they know the choices. Yeah, yeah, they know about bad choices and good choices. Okay. So I feel like just knowing, just based off that, knowing that, I feel like something, like we've been saying, something had to, some type of interest, something they saw, something yeah. they was introduced to, something they may have been seeing, yeah. had to reflect them. Because how could, like, my thing is this, how and what you said, how how could that possibly be to where somebody can just know off the rip at a young age to say, I feel as though because I, I always see the transition. Mm-hmm. It's always like you're you like you like uh let's say you're a man. Mm-hmm. You like you, the you like the opposite sex. Or the but same. But then sex. you transition and you feel as though like, you know, you don't feel comfortable every story i heard i've never i don't never heard nobody just be like i'm a girl i feel like i'm a girl yeah like you know what i'm saying i mean they say kids come out with like the wayne ways uh maybe i just don't know enough research on it i don't know but i just like just common sense wise for me it's like yeah like the, 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 the another argument they have with the whole transgender thing is like um hermaphrodites you know like people that's like intersex that have they born with both, both. Uh, genitalia uh, and shit? See, I don't know. Enough. But it's, it is people do exist like that. But it's always only one set of them bitches work. Like either they got ovaries <laughs> and they coochie work, yeah, and get wet and but shit. But why does he look like? Why does he look like a man? But the coochie working, you know what I mean? Like that's fuck. It's a deformity, you yeah, know. It's, it's not it's the like norm. Down syndrome or something. But then he. The person got all the females parts in the inside of it. But th- my point is, maybe they look like a dude. Like, it's a, it, they deformed, you know? Like, there's a mess up. It's, it's some just got fucked up, up in the, the womb, you the know? Damn, the, the eggs. But they, but they got are. Up. Yeah, but they are what what works. It's is like my a, point. It's like, it's like, I don't know. Like, it's like humans breathe air, and you might have a human that can breathe on the water. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, <laughs> no, it's like, it's like being born. 
with one arm or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, is, is this dude going to identify as a as an arm person or something? You <laughs> so know, then, like, then no. It, like, it, it, it's genetic. Then we can look at it as like it's some type of deformity that just... But they don't want it. They, that, that's, that's a really f- offensive thing to even suggest so because they, they identify, like, even, like, like little people nowadays are, like, because they, like, having research. The midgets. You're talking about the... the yeah, but the midgets, midgets is, like, a, it's like saying <laughs> nigga to them. It's like saying nigga is to it, them now. Is it really? Yeah, because cause they, they going to, like, they researching and, like, what the they hell? getting close to, like, I'm so getting that... that I do. They like. getting close to getting that deformity out of the gene pool and, like, eliminating, like, people having to be born as little people and shit. And the little people community, they feel like... We not a deformity. Like this is who we are, and for you to even like be doing the research is yeah, like bro. that's what I'm Holocaust type of like, shit. Bro, like you're I, trying to commit gen- genocide or something. Can I ask you, you know? a question? Like, remember what Dave Chappelle said? Like, even though he made a joke, like, what if I was a, a nigga trapped in the Chinese Chinese body, trapped in the nigga body? Right? <laughs> but could I could I really be like now? It, like, is this a society we live in where I could really be like I don't feel like I'm black. I'm white. I know I look black. But kind, I feel white. Kinda. It's yeah. getting there. It's like, getting can there. I, can I literally be like that now? It's getting there. It's you know who Rachel Dolezal is? Oh my god! Don't tell me somebody's doing that. This was years ago. This chick named Rachel Dolezal. Oh, I know oh, about the one with this the curly girl with the curly, hair. The, one with the curly hair. hair and the spray tan. Yeah. Oh my. This bitch was on the board of the in, in, in yeah, NAACP. Yeah, yeah. She was shit, white. Bro. She got a white mom this, and dad. Probably this, Irish background. All yeah, type of shit. I yeah, I know this I story. I know this story. Yeah. yeah. It's a Netflix documentary and about they caught her. her. They yeah. caught. They went they and looked her. at her. Yeah, they caught her. Fired her from the NAACP. She can't get a job nowhere no more. Yeah, but. The bitch was white. Was, was white. My thing but is, had- and it's a Korean guy now who getting surgeries, and he say he transracial, and he a white dude, but he got he got his he got his eyes like closed like a Korean. He got his like cheeks done in like Korean. He got like tra- hair transplants to get like more of a Korean brow and that shit. Is wild, and he say bro. now he Korean, and his pronoun his pronouns are. He, him, Korean. <laughs> uh, that is fucking wild. And he dead ass serious. That dead is, ass serious. I'm going to show you the video after this. He crazy. dead ass. And it's, it's a few people. It's like, it's this, it's a German chick. She got a crazy German accent. She got big ass titties. I think I seen that one too. And she got, it. they got these pigment injections that can turn white people black. Yeah, and she she got blonde hair. She got blonde I know hair. What talking about a scene. She's it. like, I just wanted to be black. It's so beautiful. Man. She was on some talk show or some it shit is, like it's that. Like, bro, this world is corrupt. Bro, it's this is a corrupt shit. world, oh bro. God, bro. To where to where like things are not simple anymore. Like you know what I mean. I was okay, like back then, like you know, in the beginning, like when they was, you know, of course, if you if you're gay, transgender, whatever. It's kind of like I I felt for them like you know I don't I don't feel like those people should be like pushed under not have job opportunities and stuff like that yeah, totally nothing don't like that. nothing are, like that yeah these like, are straight you know even when it came to the military same with, as everybody else exactly when it came to the military to that don't ask don't tell and stuff yeah. I think that shit was wrong I think if, it should like, if you would have done that when when you you was in and you was trying to get out you would have got you would have got free ticket out what you mean. Oh, you said if you was gay back then. Yeah, in the so army. when I came in, right? There nah, was it a, was done by the time <laughs> I got up. So when I came in, there was a scenario where some people were getting popped hot from for drugs, and and the route they took, they just uh, said they was gay before. They started saying, "Bro, it was like like twenty motherfuckers just came out in my company say I was gay," and then the commander's like, "You gay? Kiss him." Oh, <laughs> put him on the spot. Put him I on the spot. <laughs> Where? I was nah, dead. Man. He would have had me. I would have been bro. like, ah, you caught me <laughs> red handed, bro. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I you got me. Be, <laughs> dude, I would have probably been like, boy, this. he put him on the spot. I would have took that time. I would be like, send me the limb work before I kiss a nigga. <laughs> I did, did the fake. The guy would do this. Fake. <laughs> the fake kid. Boy, he would have been like, get in there. You gay, ain't you? But we did have one guy. I'll be like, nigga, I kiss you, soul. nigga. <laughs> yeah. We had one guy in the infantry. We knew he was just straight. Like we accepted him. Like, like yeah. And the infantry is weird, but 
We knew, but this guy could rug. Right, he that, could do all this stuff. Yeah. But you can be gay as long as you didn't like say it, right, or something. Yeah. No, but then and, don't ask, don't, don't tell. Ask, yeah, don't we, tell. At the time was don't ask, don't tell. Now it's yeah, not like that. It's like nigga, you could be gay in this motherfucker. Yeah, if you transgender in the army, they'll pay for your motherfucking surgery. But then oh, he, right? but yes. yes, yes, yes. So niggas is probably just joining the army. Yeah, there's you know? a lot of people doing that. Yes, for sure. They will pay for. I mean, your I, whole again, surgery. again, again. I don't care about like you know. I don't care about all that. Like you, you want. Chop your dick off, whatever, bro. Do whatever you want to do. That's so wild, um, man. Um, if you, <laughs> that's so wild. It is wild, but you know, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like, go ahead, do that. It ain't me, so I don't give a fuck. But like, my again, but who came up with that though? I don't know. Who, who, <laughs> who, who the developed man? the surgery to cut a nigga dick off? <laughs> and why? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is they that got, a? They got tired why is that a medical? In, why is that a medical procedure? They why got, they got tired talking? Because they trying to make people happy, bro. Like you know, can't you can't? Like I'm 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 okay with. You know you 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 are, like as an individual, you're you can do it. You have a choice. Yes. God gave you a choice to yes. do right and wrong, whatever. Yeah. You have free will. You have the right to do whatever you want with your body. You have the right to do whatever what you want. Like anything that makes you happy, I swear, bro, Go to everybody it. that's listening to this, that, you know, I know I probably said a couple things that make me seem wrong, but I really am a firm believer, like, you have the right to do whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. But I feel as though I still have my, as me not being a, you know, as being gay or, you know, transgender, like, I still have my views. You got to respect my views on it. That's all I'm saying. You got to respect yeah. my views. Like, I, I, I totally, I will, I will, like, if, you know, if there's a bill for voting and I stuff, would, all I those bills, I will vote for all them, yeah, all them uh, rights, bro. I, I feel like, so, but it's like when it starts touching to what, to my pin, uh, my opinion, like the things that I disagree with, I, I got to, I you know, I got to stand on what I believe in, exactly. too. You know what I mean? So I'm not trying to say no shit. No, I know I make jokes and shit on here. And I'm playing and shit. I'm literally just playing with certain things. But, yeah. like, you know, I just feel as though now because people are so sensitive to this whole movement thing, it's getting out of hand. It's spiraling out of control. Like, it's you like we're living in it's South like, Park or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like now we can't. It's now like the people who had the, these views... You know, even just my views. I'm not saying go out there and hang the motherfucker if he's gay. You know, I ain't mm, saying no shit like that. I'm no. just saying like, okay, it's cool be gay, but just like, I don't know, just be happy and be be gay, be a transgender, be happy, do what you got to do. As long as nobody's beating you up, telling you you can't do something in life, harassing you and shit like that, I'll stand on you with that, bro. I'm, I'm I got your back 100 percent because I feel like everybody should live their life. Yes. Happy. Yeah, they should have all the same rights we got. All the same rights, but don't, yo, but don't start don't be talking. Out here trying don't, to indoctrinate don't kids talk about shit. Disney and shit, bro. Because my 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 kid watches Disney, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't want that shit rubbing off on my kid. The same way you wouldn't want. I mean, shit. They got motherfuckers. They probably got transgenders out there that's racist. They don't want you hanging out with black kids. What's the difference of me hanging? Me, you yeah. know what I mean? You don't want them hanging. Out, you don't want your white kid hanging out with that black kid. And you a transgender. You know. But what that's mean? how they try to like. It's like a part of me feels like like you were saying before. Um, what did you say before? But you were saying like you don't want to. I forgot what the fuck you said, but. Then I lost my whole motherfucking train of thought That weed just kicked in I guess <laughs> Oh yeah you gotta cut that Yeah <laughs> What the fuck was I about to say Totally forgot what the fuck I was about to say The you, biggest thing the, the biggest thing for me is like It was uh, a good ass point too, It's huh? just that it, it's, it's, it's okay for you to believe and do whatever you want It's just When it start affecting Other people Other people's family or other people's belief, our traditions, our tradition, because you know I'm I'm a hundred percent Latino, mm -hmm. you know, and Latino like that that was when I was growing up that was like a no no like, yeah you like you like not it's in, in Africa was really bad with that yeah yeah Africa, Africa did, still don't play that I, shit yeah I seen people get burned with tires yeah man in, in some countries you, really you know but in in the Latino culture was like. It, it, you know, we knew that there was people like that, but we, we like, okay, cool. We just keep it over there. Yeah. We don't bother you. You don't bother me whatever, whatever. But it's just to the point where 
it, it is being pushed into the kid's face, and then that's when. You know, me as a parent, I'm trying to protect my kids. Exactly. exactly. All you about know. protection. It's and, such and an agenda, man. It's just like like, like with the little Nas X and I, all that the stuff he was doing in front. And my, I know my kid was listening to some of the stuff. And I'm like, we we just got to find, you know, you know, somebody else that you like, you know, or something like that. Because I don't want that, um, the, the lyrics to kind of impact who you really are. But it's tough with a kid because it's like sometimes, especially depending on what age they are, if they're like a teenager or something, like what you tell them not to do gonna is do exactly opposite. what but they, you gotta they be are going to do, you, you know. But at the end of the day, you explain to them, you know, we don't, me and my wife don't got nothing against, you know, the, the gay community or anything like that. But, you know, we show as parents. What we about? We care for each other. We 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 do stuff as a family. We go on trips, you know, all the stuff that 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 was supposed to be, you know, the traditional the, family the tradi- values. Yeah, the traditional family <clears throat> value stuff. Um, yes, you could still do those traditional value stuff, but you and know, whatever two your, females or, or exactly. whatever, whatever your traditional families may be. You yeah. know, whatever your views are in your family. But keep that shit out of my family. Yeah. I mean, I, we, we recently found out that one of our niece is is gay. And and <coughs> we were, like, kind of shocked because we never saw that coming. Okay. Like, we, we grew up with this person. We saw this person grow and all that stuff. She hit the age, you know, uh, she hit a certain age. And now she went and told her mom, hey. I'm gay, and her mom was like, "What? Oh, hold on, time out. Mm. Where'd you learn that from?" And then it just spiraled out of control. Mm. But I don't want to go too too, I mean, too the, much in yeah. the week because now it's like, yeah, it's like we we didn't see it coming. There was no like no, sign no signs it. or nothing like that. Now, like now, all of a sudden, it's like where did they like like this person just got programmed? I mean, you I'm know. sure she got her story. You know, what I'm saying it's no, it's no telling what influenced her in her life to to go down to choose that path. I got, I got cousins too. That, uh, I mean, I don't want to tell nobody business and shit, yeah. but I know people who have things in their lives that kind of triggered that lifestyle. Yeah, I was about to say that trick. You know, trigger. Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It it happens, you know, but like leave the little kids alone is my point. Yeah. And the point I, I forgot about earlier was like how that community tries to and how it kind of makes me feel a certain way. Like, <clears throat> you know, like when America was uh, transitioning from like slavery and shit yeah. You know? yeah, and black people had to get integrated into society and how white people was wasn't used to that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because forever, like, black people wasn't human, you know? Mm-hmm. We were slaves, we three, three-fourths three of a human or some shit like that. And then now, you know, it's black musicians and black actors and affirmative action, and I'm sure they felt like that, you know what I'm saying, when all that shit was happening, you know? And I some sometimes I had to catch myself like, damn, am I being, like, a old racist motherfucker that's that's set in his ways and don't want to accept the new, the new norm because it's not what I'm used to and shit like that. Yeah, and, it's true too. And they, but I don't really agree at the same time that it's the same plight. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because I'm, it ain't no disputing when a motherfucker born black. You know, I was born black as a motherfucker, mm-hmm. and there's no way around that shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I didn't choose my skin color and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I didn't choose my ancestry. You know what I'm saying? I ain't choose my mom and dad, you know? Mm -hmm. I ain't choose my actual DNA. You know, it's not a mindset that made me black or a choice. You know what I'm saying? It's no disputing it, you know? So it's not the same plight, and it kind of pisses me off when they try to act like, you know what I'm saying, they try to, like, equate it to, you know, being black and shit like that. But at the same time, I can kind of see, like, like, why... Cause like you were saying earlier, like you don't like when they push it out and be so vocal about being gay 
rather than being us saying it being straight. But I can kind of see their point of view on that end too because they've been pushed down for so long and yeah, they didn't have true. certain rights for so long. And so when they, when now that they are in the forefront, they want to fucking shout it from the fucking exactly. mountaintop and, and shit, and, you know? And that's my point. Like, you know, I, you know, I might to some people sound ignorant, but again, like maybe, maybe I, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not ignorant. Maybe I need to do more research. I also don't have to have that much research on, Things that they're still not allowed to do, what they're fighting for, I don't know. I'm just going off of my my common sense, you know, and my what my beliefs are. You know what Your I'm saying? Your philosophy. So my shit. philosophy and stuff. So maybe you know, if I could sit down with, uh, you know, and I'm not talking about just any random ass fucking gay person that comes up to me and tries to talk to me and say some some shit. Yeah. I'm talking about like in a professional. Can they really explain to me? Because I'm totally open to listen. I, I totally understand. Like again, if there's rights and stuff that these people are not getting that's like hindering them from being successful all the things that black people went through yeah you know what i'm saying then then i back i back whatever vote choice whatever they need for that like it's just again leave like the you said kids leave alone, the kids man. alone man leave the kids alone you know what i'm saying i I'm, i mean even me as a as a parent when i'm on we talked about this too last week like when we're when I'm watching like shows and shit and like, you know, yeah. everything, you know, even as an adult, they, they got, you know, every once they throw in a little. Then they you know, implemented that in yeah. Sesame Street and SpongeBob and yeah, all so that. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like you, you censor your kid from like violent movies yeah. and shit like that. And, and it's like, even me as an adult, when I see that shit myself, I'm like, mm, what's going on here? I thought my <laughs> I was watching Power, my nigga. Like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, nah. You know, like it's everywhere, every corner you turn these days, man. It's just been it's in your face, like yeah, it's not realistic for every why, story. Why didn't they push? Why didn't they push this? Another thing I can the last thing I'm gonna tap in on because you know it's about that time. But like yeah. another thing is kind of like when you made going off what you said, like your point, you know, about you know basically I, I forgot the exact point, but mm-hmm. like why didn't they speed? shit up for black people when black people were asking for all these rights because i feel like a lot of a lot of things that are happening you know this is an, i'm not trying to get into another crazy topic it's yeah. just, i'm just saying i feel like now that they are getting these rights and stuff like that as they should mm-hmm. like they like they just you know they they booming for more and not make it because this they have to understand that we it is something bro it is something we have to to get used to bro like you know yeah. society has to get used to i'm not you get what i'm saying and they also didn't do this for like you know hey can we use the same bathroom as you guys no yeah. you know what i mean like over nigga, we had to lose our lives and shit just do you know to get these rights and shit like that yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying and we still c- completely don't have have the right. i mean look the shit that happened with the covid shit mm-hmm. asian people being harassed they passed a the bill immediately for yeah. for Asian people, you know, what like for for saying bitch you started COVID because the president of the United States was saying China, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you get what I'm saying, like, but we was out there getting getting fucking um, hosed and shit, and yeah. we, you know we really had to fight for them for them rights, you Definitely. know. And people still, even when we that bill got passed, it was something that people had to adjust to. Now I'm not saying, you know, we gotta, you know. Just you know, nah, fuck that bitch. Like, wait five more years, then we'll talk about. It. I ain't saying that. I'm just saying like they also have to understand like there's some things that we still got to get used to first before you start pushing shit through Disney, nigga. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Time, but they ain't they. That's the thing. Like, <clears throat> it took it took black people a long time to get to this point. <clears throat> probably because like. That was a hard norm to break. You know, we came here as slaves and shit. And nobody had ever broke out of that shit before. Like, we laid the blueprint for them. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, activism and, like, forcing shit to change. And, like, you know, we took all the lumps for any, any like, marginalized group Mm -hmm. that want to fucking make a spot for themselves in, in, in society. With all and, our and demonstrations and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we lay all them all them blueprints and shit for feminism because cause, uh, feminism, like, white fem- like white women 
like co-opted like the civil rights movement to start feminism and to get they like they right to vote in all the, the rights that they didn't have too mm -hmm. and in turn the lgbt community started doing it too and they did it like really organized because they like a really like passionate group and they did it in a way that they did it in the fastest way possible by attacking you know if it is a orchestrated agenda or if it's not they they got in all the positions the influential positions in hollywood they got they got like in, ingrained in the fashion and into movies and, and television you know they they became execs and all this sh the shit that can change a motherfucking mind you know what i'm saying yeah, of course and that's the way they started like normalizing they got in the in politics too but like mostly in the hollywood because like you know, it's always been rumors of like Illuminati gay shit going on behind the doors in Hollywood and niggas mm -hmm. having to get fucked to like get the big role in the movie and <laughs> yeah, of course. bitches having to let the producers fuck them to get in the movie. And some of that came out with Harvey Weinstein and all yeah. that shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you saw how that got <clears throat> that turned. That, that got cut off real quick. Yeah. And the, the truth never came out, but that, that's because there was a lot of stuff at stake. I mean, it yeah. came out. That's why he fucked up now. Like, a lot of them big-ass, like, big-ass, like, movie stars came out and said they fucked their way into, they, into the movie that Harvey Weinstein gave them and shit like that. And Bill Cosby was a part of that, too. Like, fucking bitches he was trying to give careers and, Broke you know. Mountain. At least Kodak was openly about it, you know, what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he was. was he like, was. What was he doing? He was like. Yeah, he was just like, he got to fuck all his female artists his and female shit. Artists. I got to bust him. Yeah, I got to bust him. <laughs> shit, man. Yeah, but we getting deep into that shit. I think we went, we done went well over man, I think an hour and a half. Like four hours? Yeah. Nah, it's been probably like two hours or something. Has it? It feel yeah. like we've been here for huh? four hours. Two hours and 48 minutes. Damn. Damn. We went Damn. off on some tangents there, but it was some good conversation, good though. Good conversations, you know. Yeah, but we're going to go ahead and... <laughs> I didn't know it was that long. I thought it was Damn. a little bit over two hours yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Yeah, man. But, you know, when it happened like that, we talking talking some good shit. Yeah, I, listen, man. I love I love, love everybody, bro. Yeah. Yeah, we love everybody. <laughs> love to everybody. I, I really love everybody, man. So treat those, everybody you know equally. Just treat me equally in my, my equally. beliefs. Yeah, man. let us keep <laughs> our beliefs, too, you know? Man. Man. You know what I'm saying? But I fucks with y'all, man. It was so much other points. I'm like, we gonna say that for another yeah. another one. We done did. We done damn near did three hours. But see, low. Yeah. Appreciate you for coming yeah, through, facts, man. man. It's been a pleasure. I definitely need you to add me in that game, though. You know what yeah, saying? I got you, bro. You can yeah. keep up with him. I don't think I can keep up with you. You number one in Germany or something. Like you never even got around to saying. Yeah, anything. I didn't even get to that point. You're gonna have to come back and discuss all that. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was fun though. Yeah, it was, it was fun. fun. But all right, man. This has been. Oh, is it anything you wanted to plug, like your Twitch or your Instagram or YouTube? You got a lot of shit to plug. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of my social media is all the same. Um, um, just a couple little different things here and there, but uh, you can find me on on, on Twitter. I'm DJ Celo on Twitter. Uh, it's spelled D and the J and the C E E L O, okay. and then um, and then all my other social media. It's the same way. You just got to add the TTV at the end for uh, Twitch television. Okay. We're going to put your link. You got to just give me the link. Yeah, I'll I give you all the, the links. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So DJ CeeLo TTV or DJ CeeLo, you'll find me on all social media platforms. Cool, man. With that being said, this has been... Oh, I'm not even in focus and shit. This has been the Quote Ghost Podcast, man. Episode 10. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. And we'll see y'all on the next episode. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you enjoyed this podcast, you already know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, I'm going to tell you what to do. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell icon, and give us a like. Because it's the Quote Go Podcast, man. You can't, you can't go wrong. Tune in every weekday, 6 o'clock, Friday, full episodes on YouTube and Spotify. Hit us up on the Instagram. Give us topics. And we appreciate it, man. Quote Ghost Podcast. We out.